what a useful piece of information that we didn't get like taught earlier. You know, like, it's also pretty cool. You might find this gross because you don't like buttholes. I, <laughs> or whatever she said earlier. I know. I, you're right. Let's go home. The average wait time to see a doctor booked on ZocDoc is between just 24 and 48 hours. That is it. You can even score a same day appointment. So once you find the doc you want, you can book them immediately with just a few app taps. No more waiting, no more waiting awkwardly on hold with a receptionist. App taps. And go to ZocDoc.com slash wild and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash wild. Z-O-C doc.com slash wild. Welcome back to Wild Till Nine. Today we are joined by Dr. Mike. And Dr. Mike, I have a prepared biography because we booked Dr. Mike about two hours ago. Yeah. And so we have done the Dr. Mike crash course. Dr. Mike is a board certified family medicine physician, media personality, educator, philanthropist, and more recently, amateur boxer, named the sexiest doctor alive in 2015 by People Ooh. Magazine. Feel free to give us a flex. He's used his brawn and brains to share the importance of a healthy lifestyle while battling misinformation through videos and his podcast, The Checkup. And I feel like we can't do a biography without shouting out Bear. Yeah, you can't You can't do anything without Bear on social media. Father of Bear. Uh, father of Bear. Which by the way, I don't know if you saw, there was a Jeep commercial the other day. Was Bear in it? Yes, but it wasn't my bear. Same dog, same breed, same color, name tag says bear. The bear, and it wasn't the bear. And it wasn't the bear pup <gasps> with 170,000 followers. So literally. lawsuit that's coming soon. That's blasphemy. Yeah, exactly. yeah, that's awful. Okay, wow. We're, are we boy, boycotting Jeep now? No, 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 no. It's okay, it's okay. As long as- We're trying to get the target, di do target dog fired because I just feel like there needs to be some representation. We're not, we're not trying for to get the target dog fired. We're trying to open up more opportunities for the tan and white right. bull colored terriers. bull terriers, yeah. not just the white bull Fair. terriers. And you have a double, so right. maybe there's yeah. like a, a two buy one, one, get one. Yeah, like yeah. a savings thing that they can Although do. Although I feel like that's, I mean. <laughs> the BOGO. I was gonna say Target, Target loves which a should BOGO. be one. Target yeah. loves a BOGO. But your, your love, <laughs> yeah, no, that's a marketing thing. And wow. they can do something with like tan coats for the fall. See? And then this you is, get the tan version of the dog. I know that you're a doctor, but this is really great marketing advice. I, don't know. I feel like this <laughs> is yeah. what the course is. Media mogul, <laughs> Dr. Mike. <laughs> So how often do you get asked if you're a real doctor? Because when I was doing research on you yep. in our short amount of time of prep, that is one of the top Googled questions. I get it a lot. I would say it's changed over the years. Oh yeah. Because when I first started, I was a med student, so I wasn't even a doctor yet. Right. right. But then as time went on and I started posting more content that was serious in nature, showing my day in the life in the hospital, getting serious figures on my podcast, like Dr. Fauci or the mm -hmm. Surgeon General. Mm -hmm. The credibility came along. Yeah, with that's it. real. Right. So yeah, right. Those yeah are you, real you can't fake this. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you don't go to the White House and be like, not really a doctor. It's subtle flex. But, but were there like previous shows where the, the doctor was fake? I wonder. Like, well, I mean, you just see like, especially on TikTok, how many people just put on a lab coat and put a stethoscope around their neck and then they start spouting off I mean, just like crazy shit. I, I would probably fall for that if I was if I liked what they had to say. I'd be like, I knew it. I've always thought that. That's my career now. It's <laughs> debunking TikTok stuff, which is why I love YouTube. Yes. They now have a thing on the bottom. Like if you look at the bottom of my videos, mm -hmm. it says this is a licensed medical professional in the US. Oh because they partnered with some agencies that actually verify. Wow. That you're a legit doctor. Wait, that's amazing. So you, did you have to go through Yeah, verification hoops? process, wow. yeah. Oh, wait, that's so great. I feel like every platform needs that. Right? Oh my God, wait, that's, I obviously we have barely, we have one college degree between the two of us, barely. Right, and right, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. those are kind of falling out of favor these days. Yeah. Well, I had no idea at the time, but I was ahead of the curve. Yeah. Yeah. Right, you were just, yeah, it was trendy then. Yeah, it was, was trendy now. I was innovative, yeah. <laughs> I was like, you know what? As your mother agrees. This isn't gonna be cool in a couple of years. I'm sure we could give, give this picture. I'm gonna to head doctor. out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I've given it to her for 10 years. <laughs> she still doesn't like it. Was it always doctor for you? Cause I know you love dogs as well too. So do you ever consider a veterinarian Ooh. or was it always doctor? I, I think it was always doctor. Yeah. I had a unique experience in that I came from Russia when I was six. Yes. And my father was a doctor back in Russia when mm -hmm. he came to the States, had to do it all over again. Oh my Med God. school, residency, no in his way. 40s, wow. in a new language. Good for him. That's so incredible. Props to him. Yeah. Also, I never got the chance to say like, dad, med school's hard. Cause he's like, yeah, yeah. I did it way yeah. worse. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> Wait, and do you feel, actually that I was really interested about that exact topic when I was listening for the last two hours here specifically. Do you feel like that's fair, having to repeat everything again? 
I don't know if it's fair. I will just say that I cannot put myself in his shoes, mm -hmm. imagination wise, hypothetically wise. What would have to go wrong in the States for me to leave the US to another country whose language I don't know right. mm -hmm. and have to redo eight years of education? With a kid. Yeah. With a kid. With, with a two kid. kids. Yeah. Right, right. Risking it all. Yeah. What has to happen here? Right. Quite a bit. And then I have to give him props because. Look what's happening in Russia right now. He foresaw it. Yeah. Right. Just like you did with the college situation. Right. I knew. I had to get ahead out early. Ahead of the curve. We're ahead basically of the, curve. the same type of yeah, hero. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I got that message too. I'm glad you saw that. <laughs> so then growing up, seeing your dad, also your mom was a mathematics professor or something? In like? Russia, yes. Yeah. So but coming here, obviously the degrees don't yes. translate. So she had to just do whatever she could to support mm -hmm. our family, which meant sweeping floors for wow. $5 an hour. Wow. She would not take the bus to work to save the dollar on Metro fare. Wow. So she was like a champion in my book. Right. And Immigrant families. Yeah. yeah. The hustle yeah. was real. Hustle and was real. watching all that, being a 10 year old, you learn and you instill in yourself really good values. Right. And most kids are young when their uh, parents are going through med school. I was 10. So I was learning and watching and seeing what he's studying. Right. And right. I got excited about it. And that's mm. how the doctor because most Route started. kids don't see their parents have to study. Exactly. They're just doing it. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Really you know, are. that's okay. I don't think that's fair. I'm going to go ahead and say math should be pretty much the same. I agree. <laughs> numbers are numbers. What, it, what, it's what, but Aramaic? Teaching. Right? I guess teaching. Teaching yeah. is, yeah. Yeah, but still. Did she ever get back into yes, mathy stuff? Yes. Oh, right. amazing. So, like, she started tutoring kids in our home. Mm -hmm. Okay. Usually Russian people that spoke Russian as oh, well. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then she started picking up English and ended up teaching at Turo College in New York City. Wow, nice. good Where she her. had her own classes and everything, so I was excited. So, you guys have big brain genetics in your family? They do. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. I do not. Yeah, adjacency. I, I don't know if you can sit there and say that as a doctor. <laughs> I will say my success comes from the lack of big brain Ooh. because okay. when I learn medical concepts, mm -hmm. it's so complicated for me. I have to simplify it to the most basic level. When I'm learning about white blood cells and how they protect the body, I'm like, all right, cops and robbers, right. offense, defense. Mm -hmm. And when I do that, it makes it real easy to teach the subject when I'm making a video on YouTube. Right. So because yeah. I have to dumb it down for myself, it works real well. No, yeah, I was gonna say, I think that's become a massive asset in the way that you deliver information because it's 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 digestible. Pun. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, that was good. How is residency? Cause it's like you watch all these shows and like that's kind of the, I never had anyone that was kind of in like the med school track like in my life growing mm -hmm. up. And so, my only experiences through TV and movies of seeing people. Don't say Grey's Anatomy. I actually have never watched an episode of Grey's Anatomy. Wow. I Same. know. I know wow. of McSteamy or McDreamy yeah, or whoever a, that is. There's both of them. I think those are separate. There's, oh, those, those are, are, separate, are no, separate those characters. are separate people of McSteamy and McDreamy. Mm -hmm. I thought there was only one. But let's be, Zach Braff was a real doctor, right? That's Scrubs. Right. Different show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, <laughs> yes. he was real, right? Yeah, well, yeah. Re real. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I watched House and I watched okay. a little bit of The Good Doctor, which is more recent. Yeah. Wow, that's just. I Those know. are more accurate than Grey's Anatomy. Oh, you think? I feel like Grey's Anatomy yeah. was about McSteamy and McDreamy. It was so much is this romance. Real? Are you guys you guys aren't kidding? McSteamy and McDreamy no, are those real. are their names. Yeah. I mean nicknames on the show. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. That, for one of the it. one of the hot guys. I think if I'm not mistaken, mistaken, Grey's Anatomy came from a soap okay. opera. Okay. So like. Yeah it carried over that the extreme, drama. the drama and all that <laughs> yeah, stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. And medicine kind of came second. And they right. sprinkled in a little bit yeah. of that. <laughs> they were like, doctor stuff. It happens in the hospital though. <laughs> yeah, so. We had all this like medical stuff from a movie we did. How do we use it? Let's right. just put it in one room, call it a day. But so is residency and like the, the grind of 80 hour weeks, like is that really what it's like? Yeah, it is like that. It's really bad. It's and, crazy. You know, I, initially was really adamant about getting those hours changed. Mm -hmm. Like for example, when I came in, uh, I think there's a 24 hour cap of how many hours straight you can work. 24? 24. Got it. That was the cap. Even Got that. That's so before crazy. it was even longer than right. that. Yeah. What, what was it? It was know? like 36 or something where there were no caps and people frequently work 36 hour shifts. But then they try to make it 16. Okay. And while if you're following logic, you're like, oh, well, you'll be better slept because you're not working 24 mm -hmm. hours and you're going to mm -hmm. get some rest and you're less likely to make mistakes. Not necessarily true. Okay. okay. Get this. The biggest mistakes that happen in a hospital is when you have one person on the medical team 
transfer over the care to another person. Right, and things get lost. In translation. Yes. And that handoff, the less handoffs you have with the patient, the less likely a bad mistake will happen. Right. So having someone come in for a 24 hour shift and you have just one handover mm -hmm. versus having that yeah. extra eight hour hang, uh, handover reduces mistakes in a lot wow. of cases. Yeah. So it's kind of like the worst of both Is worlds. Is everyone just, just pumping on caffeine? Like how do you survive? Like how does the body- I did no caffeine in residence. Shut the fuck yeah. up. And you- But now I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Was so it like all a, an school, act of choice? Uh, yeah, no, I didn't swear off of it, right. but it was just, I had a natural energy. I was really excited to be there. Youth. Every day was cool. Youth. Youth. Yeah. 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 Now it's gone. <laughs> oh my God. No caffeine. No so caffeine. just alive. Just, just, just alive, pumping excited, on knowledge. Yeah. Just happy to be there. Just so excited. Oh my God. Cause it was cool. It was like, you're in your, it's like fantasy camp. Right. You're like, they're allowing me to treat people. This is your fantasy camp. I want to yes. be very clear. Okay, this yes. is not my fantasy camp. <laughs> Our fantasy camps look very differently. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> there. Wow. 24 hours. 24 hours. And so you, I heard you say something on the podcast that I feel like gave me such a good uh, like envisioning of what it looks like. So it's that you watch something happen and then you try something and then you teach it. Is that yes. how you said it? Yeah. Watch one, do one, teach one. Watch one, do one, teach one. Yeah. That's good. And so how many years is that? Watch one, do one, teach one. <laughs> yeah. is, is, how many years well, do you Well, residency watch? is three years. <laughs> okay, three years. So- in the US, you do four years of medical school. Yep. And then you, the last two years of medical school that you're spending time on clinical wards. So you're already in the hospitals. Mm -hmm. You're kind of right. watching what residents do. Uh, you might be even taking histories and interacting with patients. And then when you come into your first year as an intern, now you're starting residency. And depending on which specialty you go into, there's different lengths. For me, being a family medicine doctor, that meant three years, mm -hmm. where every either 12 weeks, eight weeks, or four week cycles, you're rotating through different specialties within the hospital because oh, I'm wow. a general medicine doc. Got I it. see. So I spend time on surgery, delivering babies. Uh, oh my God. Uh, outpatient care, uh, specialty care, ENT, cardiology. So we were everywhere. Wow. Like a that's Swiss great. Army knife for yeah. the doctor. Right. Exactly. Right. My mom right now, she is retired and she's a, a busy body and um, she keeps her time very, her schedule booked. She is volunteering as a simulated patient right now Ooh, at our university. Those are so fun. Yeah. She was, she had to do like a rigorous interview test yes. with like charades and acting and like role playing. Very performative. Very performative. Okay. It's yeah. really good. It's wild. And I can't imagine the people that you come across and the things that you see. Well, with the simulated patients, what gets even a higher level of acting is there's sexual simulated patients. Oh my that God. You, I'm listening. Well, you have <laughs> to learn how to perform a pap smear, uh -huh. okay. how to do a pelvic exam. Right. Okay. You have to learn how to perform a prostate exam. Okay. So in order to learn, you, you have do. simulated patients. Oh my God. So you'd be in a room with a gentleman who's like, you're gonna inspect my prostate. Uh -huh. He would look at all our nails to make sure our nails were cut short. <laughs> Because, you know, yeah. you're getting yeah, multiple yeah, yeah. students a day. No one's trying to get their butthole scratched off. Finger up the bum. Yeah. That's not very comfortable. This but is Jeremy's worst nightmare right now. Like his, his, <laughs> his asshole just retracted inside his body about a foot. I wasn't going to say anything, <laughs> but yeah. Okay. I, I, I assume that by the time my first one comes around, I'll be able to be just completely knocked out. I, I'll be able to pay for that. Interesting. Yeah. I would... That the risk benefit scenario doesn't work out there. Walk me through you that. You know what, Dr. Mike, as the person who will have to be supportive and listen to the complaining that goes up to this, like leading up to it, I'm gonna knock him out. Fair. This is also someone who will get herself knocked out for every teeth cleaning. Oh, I get high as sh not actually knocked out. Not actually knocked. I just. I, I hope just, you're not going into general anesthesia for cleaning. I just go. I just get a little laughing gas. Oh, well, every that's time. okay, I right? Mean, every time. I get my teeth cleaned once a year. That's also not great. <laughs> <laughs> that is every eight months, isn't it? Every eight months. Six months. Oh. Six months, yeah. Anyways, so yeah, love a little laughing gas. Very fun. Okay. Um, Just making up. No, I mean, it's very eight months. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah. what they always say, every I, nine months. I thought it was every eight months. <laughs> I mean, yours I genuinely in my soul thought that. Yeah, well. We need a dentist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Do you have people, like, it's not good that I have your number now because we have a vet friend yeah. who oh, our, we've just, like, we'll be like, hey, like, little emergency happening right now. Like, can I send you a picture of my dog's poo right now? Like, do you, should we go to ER? Mm -hmm. And and I'm a little nervous because I am a self-aware hypochondriac. Stage nine clinger hyper, like, hypochondriac. But aware. Uh, like, yeah. my dad's a hypochondriac, but I would say that I am too, but I am fully aware that I'm, that I, un need, I needlessly, Spiral? Yeah, whichever one. Yeah. I, but uh, how do you act upon that? 
Mostly just complaining, which I think is fine. Okay. Like I'm not taking other people's appointments. Yeah, I, you know I, what I mean? Like I get the brunt of it. Yeah. yeah, like I'm not someone who is like, oh, I'm dying. I need an MRI, a CT scan, uh, uh, a colonoscopy. For example, I gave her a Zyrtec once because she, her allergies were, you know, fair. A little antihistamine. Yeah. And um, she can you take that every day, by the way? She uh, she. Then I went, mean, if you need to, yeah. <laughs> not, okay, don't right. do it for funsies. Right. Ooh. Well, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to feel Ooh, something. Zyrtec. <laughs> and, and she was convinced that she then needed to take a four to five hour nap because of just the, Felt a the, drowsy the effects of the Zyrtec. And and that was like- The just, newer antihistamines like Zyrtec are less drowsy, right. but they can still be drowsy. Yeah. Did you hear that? It sh- oh, I'm sure that there is some drowsy. I don't know if it was a five hour nap drowsy, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was just well, a five hour nap just feels good. Sometimes. Yeah, thank you for the soul. So, for the soul, that's a prescription for the soul. Not sorry, <laughs> not sorry, <laughs> not type related. Yeah, no, you're a bit of um, uh, you're sensitive. Yeah, I'm sensitive. Yeah, that's okay. okay though. Yeah, it's okay. What <laughs> happens if you take a Benadryl? Oh God. Oh, I'd Clear be asleep for sure. Okay. Yeah, like Clear if it. I if I'm having a panic attack, like I can even take half of a 0.25 of a Xanax to help bring me down. And you're just and I'm yeah. And yeah, I'm I don't know what it would take to get like you addicted to something. Um, That's not a fun game to play. You don't think so? <laughs> no. <laughs> Where is your addiction? Where, Where is the, is the level? Yeah, yeah. Where is the level? Yeah. Um, so a few hot topics, I feel like in um, headlines that I guess probably have a little bit of crossover with your expertise mm-hmm. is caffeine intake. And so you walked in and were like, I'll take a coffee or a Celsius. So you drink mm-hmm. caffeine now. Mm-hmm. What's your limit? Ooh. Uh, like normally I have one to two coffees a day. Coffees. Yeah, the coffees. East Coast just Sorry, popped out of right <laughs> yeah, there. I know. It would have been so subdued until that moment. Yeah. Coffees. Yeah. So one to two. Yeah, one or two, okay. But yeah, I try not to overdo it. And I, I've i sometimes gotten to the point where it's three mm-hmm. and I'm like, Doctor. okay, I need to cut back. Hmm. I can't remember the last time I had less than three coffees in a day. How many milligrams of caffeine could a 6'4 white male who's 30 years old, how old are you? No, 31, how old are you? Well, it could be about anybody, but I am 31. <laughs> if I was speaking hypothetically about someone, how much caffeine could a 6'4 white male with below average heart health drink a day? <laughs> the recommended intake, max intake is 400 milligrams, so I would stay under there. <laughs> and you gotta be careful, because some Starbucks beverages, like the big ones, yeah, the blonde roasts, right. they'll have like four plus. Re- a shot, plus. espresso shots in there? No, 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 like 400 plus milligrams, milligrams. of caffeine. Yeah. Oh my God, I'd be, so able, I'd be dead. And then when you stack that on top of Adderall and Vyvanse, how how does that mm. look? Oh, that that's that's a lot. Recommend that's a lot of mm. stimulant. That's a lot of stimulant. Got it. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, any questions about you then, Lauren? <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, you know what? How about this? You, oh, here we oh, go. Let's play this game. This is just uh, Dr. Mike uh, diagnosing. There's no patient privacy here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if I can't swallow food that anybody else could just swallow normally all the time, what would that? What could that possibly be? Uh, that could be a lot of things. Yeah. Well, it could be list them all. A psychogenic where you're like afraid to swallow for whatever reason and you're not swallowing. There could be- I'm afraid to swallow something. Let's be very clear. <laughs> okay, fair. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there, there could be, I thought it said till nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. till nine. Yeah. <laughs> there could be a mechanical obstruction. Oh, that sounds that sounds right. Yeah, yeah. Something, okay. something like physically yeah. wrong with it. Like a diverticulum. Yeah. Uh, it's called the Zenker's diverticulum where it could even create a little pouch inside there. Like a it, kangaroo it, pouch? It can, it can happen inside your esophagus, yeah. Um, you could have really bad acid reflux where you're having erosion. No, oh, it's, it's not that bad. I, my acid reflux is not too bad. Yeah, I, what's, what's with the swallowing thing? How would you describe it? Yeah, that? what is the swallowing? I, I love how we just turned this into like, yeah, hey, diagnose, diagnose. us. Well, yeah. Someone the other day tried to diagnose me with dyslexia the other day, which I definitely don't have. I'm quite a good <laughs> who's reader. Di- who's diagnosing? I hope these are not medical professionals. Oh, they're not. Okay. <laughs> they're, they're really not. Does that, you have to be a medical professional to <laughs> diagnose somebody? Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, to make it official. <laughs> so I get this thing and we call it a gobble ball where I'll just be eating. We, and we don't call it a gobble ball. You call so it a gobble I ball. I call it a gobble ball. And, and, and it's a group activity. And you don't call it, you scream it every time. You go, gobble ball. <laughs> and it just feels like there's, I'm concerned that you look concerned. I, I, it's just, you're screaming, there's gobble balls. Yeah, yeah. Well, it just feels you're like it. it's there's like something stuck here. I can still breathe. Everything's fine. Mm. It's chill. Mm. <laughs> Sure. And then it goes away after a few seconds. I, the medical advice I would give you is yeah. you should investigate that. You mm. think? Yeah. So Put like for list. all the things you were scared of that you were like putting off going to see a doctor because you thought you were just scared for no reason. This is like a thing I would check. Really? Yeah. But are they going to do the thing where they it goes up the nose and then down my throat? They could. <laughs> I suddenly have hey, never hey, had a gobble ball in my life. Yeah, yeah. Can you is it a mucus gobble ball? No, it's it's a it's a, it's exclusively when I'm eating. I mm. saw a TikTok of other people talking about how they'd had it, and it had a lot of views. And everyone was like, "Oh, like I didn't realize this was such a 
experience phenomenon amongst other people. And I was like, oh, obviously we're all fine. The internet's good at that. Yeah, the internet's good at that. Yeah. But I will say when we make a diagnosis, we usually don't just say it's one thing mm -hmm. because in medicine, it's hard to ever pinpoint with 100% accuracy yeah. anything. Mm -hmm. So you have something that's known as a differential diagnosis where you have what you think the main culprit is and then a list of like 10 other things or maybe even more of what it could be. Right. And when you say that you have some kind of mass in your throat, <laughs> I get worried <laughs> that I'm like, this should be investigated. That's a, yeah, I've never thought about it that way, but you're right. Like you have to like almost logic tree it out of like, yeah. could be this, could be this, could be this, probably this. No, could like, be. Is there a world where I'm just eating too fast and there's just a clump, no, a gobble I, ball? No, no, you are eating too fast. Is that on a differential? Yes. yes. But is that on the top? No. Because okay. the way you formulate a differential has to be based on some kind of logic. Okay. And the logic is some things like, are you eating too fast? Could be ruled out once you rule out the scary stuff. Mm. So you rule out this, if someone comes in with chest yeah. pain, it also could be acid reflux. Mm. But I don't just say, ah, are you at a meal? It's not a heart attack. So we rule out that they're not having a heart attack. Everything else is fine. We have a clear chest x-ray. Nothing mm -hmm. else is going on. We say it's likely musculoskeletal or something going on in your GI tract. But we have to rule out the other stuff. <laughs> I fell, I, I've never broken anything, never sprained anything. I'm pretty, although clumsy, pretty accident free. But the only time that I've ever had anything like slightly traumatic is I was, I wasn't even on my bike. I was standing next to my bike. It toppled over. An athlete. An athlete. And the handlebars were perpendicular to the ground. And my throat just went right on top oh. of the handlebars. Uh, I only weighed probably on. You left out such a key piece of <laughs> history. <laughs> oh my fucking God. Do you think that's connected? Well, it's not not connected. Yeah. <laughs> Never thought about it that way. I was just gonna say I'm scared to get this looked at because then my dad took me to ER because I couldn't breathe or speak and they put the thing up my nose and down my throat. Yeah, so there are these car cartil car car cartilages. You can say anything and we'll agree with you, so. Th there are C rings of cartilage okay. around your windpipe Okay. that if they're, they can break, they'll heal okay. because they're cartilage, not bone. And if there's like a little bit of um, scar tissue there or something, maybe that's what you're feeling. We've solved it. it no, we didn't solve it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that's good. how it works. I feel good about no, this. Yeah. No, <laughs> Yeah, this is good. What's so funny, you do, you in another world, you could have been the best salesperson in the world, I've decided. Because well, you are, you're so good at the, um, the only sales class in college that I didn't graduate from that like I, I really appreciated was the guy who spent the entire semester saying, I know you want to answer the question with the right answer. But as opposed to just saying it how you want to say it, it's always um, I might suggest or I, I I I would propose or the the data would reflect. And you're so good at presenting information mm -hmm. in that form. I'm sure for a thousand legal reasons. Yeah. But you're rock solid with it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I think there's an art to medicine. Yeah. And yeah. that's the art that can be weaponized. Ooh, tell me. And that's how what you're probably seeing on TikTok these days when you're seeing people sell magical cure-all supplements. Yeah. This is or, the answer, this yeah. is the solution. Like, oh, you're feeling tired? How about a little testosterone? Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, well, wait a second. Yeah. I'm like, does everyone need testosterone? Let's, let's pause on it. And the people historically who've been successful in media that are in the medical field have literally almost always been selling you some BS. Right. Are you Whether telling me Liver King? A, I was gonna say Liver King. Liver King, Dr. <laughs> yeah. Oz, like all these names that yeah. pop up yeah. over, the, yeah. over the course of time. None of them have really been ethical in any of their mm. messaging. Yeah. So I, the whole goal of starting my YouTube channel was to do that, but do it ethically. Yeah. And I'm like, look, it's possible. Why is still everyone selling junk? Like you can do well and be financially well off and all your goals. And yeah. they're like, but the views aren't coming. So we're gonna make it extreme and tell you how your zodiac sign impacts your heart health. Okay, my rising sign is very important in how I dictate my supplement. I'm, I'm just fucking with you. Because supplements are not regulated, like what do you think the best approach for someone to kind of like take stuff and like fill in the gaps of their diet? Like what, what do you recommend? What would you recommend? It's, <laughs> it needs to be very individualized yeah. to a person. And when I say that, I mean that the huge majority of people that are young and healthy. And when I say young, that goes into their 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm. You could be young and healthy in your 50s and 60s. Don't need supplements. Wow. Yeah. So like- Cause I'm you, sure so many people are like, well, what do you take? What do you nothing. take? Yeah. You take nothing. Zero. You uh, take zero. Whatever's in this is the only <laughs> vitamin that I uh, added to my uh, intake today. Wow. But to me, that speaks volumes. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. It would be so easy to make so much money yeah. if so I easy. wanted to sell this stuff. Yeah. I'd be like, oh, 
Here's my you want to be fit? Here's my protein shake. Yep. You want my magic want, mic pill? Yeah, my magic mic. Pill. Wow, I mean, it's do right you, there. Do you it's know right how there. sick it is? You said that they're not regulated by the FDA, the supplements. Yeah. So right now, if we p- poured out some protein, some creatine, whatever vitamins we want, put them into capsules right here on this table, put them in a magic mic bottle, mm-hmm. and sold them, legal. That's- well, maybe the magic mic people will come after us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, but like but, of that. But the medically, fact that the only thing that we would be concerned with is, is, the, is, is, is the stripper is the yeah. stripper yeah. show. Is Channing Tatum yeah. showing up and being like, "Bro, I want my piece." Yes. <laughs> yeah. That so that's is why. wild. So it's really it's scary. It's unfortunate. People get taken advantage of day in and day out because yeah. right. Our bodies are a little bit of a mystery. Mm-hmm. A little bit being an Lot. understatement. And when people can't figure out their own bodies or even their own minds because mental health is not talked about enough. People start looking for answers that are shortcuts. And when Mm -hmm. people present them very confidently or they look good themselves and they sell you that magic potion, it's tempting to take it. So I understand why people like go into that direction. They're like, doctors suck. My doctor spends 10 minutes with me while looking at the computer screen the whole time. Right. They're not helping me and I get it. Is that the case in other countries? Are supplements more regulated elsewhere or is it Mm -hmm. still a gray area? Not an expert on yeah. other countries. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I just yeah. I know like advertising we're very weird America, us in New Zealand. So yeah, for like pharma. Like yeah. die yeah. hard on like making sure that you can sell dick pills at seven thirty PM <laughs> between Fox News shows. But like uh everything else sorry. Uh <laughs> but like everything else is like the rest of the world's like, eh, not really. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if supplements are like that too. I, don't I, know. I, I feel like we've known some people that have made some serious money from supplements. Yeah, seriously. It's yeah. crazy. A lot of money. I almost feel like I get the recommendations for things that I'm like, oh, maybe I should add this to my routine from girls on TikTok who definitely are not medical professionals, which is my first mistake. <laughs> but I'm like, oh, like I've been following you forever. You look like you live a similar lifestyle. And obviously it's impossible to like actually know the reality. Mm-hmm. But I would say that I add a step of like, let me look into this first to see if this actually makes sense That's for really me. That's really good. Which is uh, hopefully a little beneficial. But do you think that they're like being more medical professionals or not even medical professionals, people making medical content has done more harm than good. I think it's been the absence of good quality doctors because Mm -hmm. they're worried about being labeled unprofessional by taking selfies or making silly videos on YouTube or TikTok, whatever. The absence of them has allowed people to proliferate and say BS. Right. Because no one's there to fact check them. So it just lives unfiltered. Yeah. Well, what what is the... Fact checking in particular, right? Mm-hmm. Where is the universal source of truth that people could actually go to? Well, I never want to say something all high and mighty, like I'm right. the universal source yeah. of truth. <laughs> my whole thing is if the idea of I did my own research right. is nice, but problematic on its front. Yeah. Right. Because to be honest, it's very difficult even for me as someone who's educated in the field to always do my research. Right. Mm-hmm. A lot of times I have to delegate that to people who are specialists in the field, mm-hmm. who I trust and I understand where their knowledge comes from. So for, for someone with no medical background to say, I've done my research, it's hard for me to buy that when I know that what limitations doctors, even primary care doctors have. We have to look to people who are specialists or organizations that are passing down that information. One person can't have all the answers. Right. Sure. So it's like, we have to be a little bit more humble and yeah. if someone's doing it, maybe call them out. Right. <laughs> That's oh my God, it's scary. So you had this BuzzFeed article. So you were on Instagram doing like little day in the lives, right? Mm-hmm. That's how that started kind of in 2015-ish. Mm-hmm. And BuzzFeed found you. Yeah. Sexiest doctor ever. Obsessed. It becomes obsessed with you. And you you were not a doctor in 2015? I was. I was a first year resident or second year resident. Okay, got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. And then you decide that this is, so tell the story about about Ellen and and your decision of like what the catalyst. Oh, yeah. Yeah. To start making content. So- when I was in my first year of residency, that's your hardest year of residency. Okay. So you're spending two cycles in the ICU, which is you got to be there at 5 a.m. to start doing pre-rounds. And what's a cycle? Um, a cycle is usually, I think, 12 weeks. I don't okay. remember exactly how our cycles broke up. It's been 10 years got since oh, man. my uh, yeah. residency was It's been was 10 years there. since I dropped out of school too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you don't remember your college schedule either. I didn't remember when I was there. Yeah. No. <laughs> so... Um, Yeah, I would be there and I would be working these crazy long hours. And then just as my first year ended, where kind of I got to know everyone in the hospital because you're there so much. So the nurses get to know you, the MAs, the pharmacy people, like the Mm -hmm. whole crew gets to know you. And we had a great relationship. And then I had this viral moment of fame coming from BuzzFeed article. And then it was the time where regular people were going viral for their looks. Right. 
you had like weather people. Alex from Target. Yeah, Alex from Target. Yeah. The police officer, like a lot of random people went viral. Mm-hmm. So I happened to be one of those. And during that week, I get a call from like Ellen DeGeneres, Steve Harvey, all these shows. And they're like, come on our show, but don't do theirs. And I had to pick one, which I have no PR it's so training. Predatory. Right? Right. It's so predatory. Right. The exclusivity portion of it. And yeah. I'm like, uh, I, I guess Ellen, because she's the most popular, I'll sure. do it. Yeah. And I was locked in because Ellen was coming to New York to do a Labor Day show, which they never usually film out of New York. They film in LA. Mm-hmm. And the day before the show, I'm like, "Is it, what's the schedule like for tomorrow? They're like, Hillary Clinton is announcing her run for presidency. And the other guests are Jimmy Kimmel and uh, Pink or something like that, or Jimmy Fallon and Pink. And you're the one we're kicking off. Boo! So Boo. I was like, that's sad. Yeah. <laughs> so I call Steve Harvey back and I'm like, hey, I'm available. <laughs> And? and they're like your old newsman. Oh, and I got you were really, last week's yes. hot person. Exactly. Now there's a vet with canaries, yes. and they're actually the woman. Okay, got it. Wow. So I, I got a really tough lesson on what media is going to treat you like. Right. Yeah. And then a few weeks later, I remember Entertainment Tonight or one of these shows was like, hey, we want to talk about the importance of exercise. Can mm. you come to a local gym? We'll have a reporter there. You'll show like what your workout. I'm like, that's amazing. I sure. want to get people excited about it. I get there. They go, okay, so remove your shirt. <laughs> oh, you're like Mick Dreamy of 2015. I'm like, I'm Take a doctor, shirt off. though. Right. Like that's, you wouldn't yeah. ask Dr. Oz to do that. And I kind of had to walk out, which I don't oh, like man. confrontation, but yeah. I had to leave. Yeah. yeah. And then that producer called crying and I felt really bad and we tried to reschedule. It never worked out. So. But like, that's tough. I mean, that, it, it's hard. You had to make that call, I assume, by yourself or yeah. around people that probably never had to make that call for yeah. you, right? Yeah, like I would tell my friends they would laugh. Right. Like, like, I would do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Your I'm support like, system. Yeah. You, They're like, come on, man, think about the DMs yeah. you'll yeah. get. Yes, yeah. that was the conversation. Every dude's friend group, bro, what do you mean yeah, you didn't what do, do you it? Mean? Why do you go to the gym? <laughs> yeah. But uh, it was um, it was tough because you want to please people, you want to be nice and all that. And when you have to stand up for yourself, I think where my values came from was that I wanted to do the medical thing. Mm -hmm. And this was an added benefit. Yeah. I didn't want to become famous. So I was like, I'm happy leaving this thing and not doing it. Versus if I had a real thirst for wanting to become famous, I think I probably would have done it. Yep. It was very easy to do it. Right. 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 It was right there. And so instead you were like, I'll just do this myself. Yeah. So then after a few weeks go by, the news channels don't want you on anymore because mm-hmm. you're old news. And I'm like, but I have so much medical information I want to share. And they're like, yeah, we don't care. So I started YouTube. And there it is. Yeah. And, and there now it is. five years, six years later, we're- uh, Has it only been five, six years? Mm-hmm. For some reason, it's felt longer. Do people come up to you and you're like, oh, you're Dr. Mike. Yeah. Like, do you get recognized? I just was in Universal Studios yesterday walking around and people were coming up and saying, hey, they love learning medicine and- they have family members that have gone to medical school because of they were watching the wow, channel. Wow, that sounds inspiring. So it's really exciting. Do people ever come up to you with rogue diagnosis questions? Like we just did? Like I, we just did? Yeah, honestly, it happens in weirdest places. Parking lots for some reason. I can see that. Like the person taking your, like the valet yeah. at, a, at a parking garage hey, will be man, like- can you check this mall real yeah, quick? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, man, come on. Yeah. Cause I'm coming out in scrubs like post shift or right. something. Right, right, right. And I'm like, come on, man. Like I'm not that type of doctor. <laughs> But, Meanwhile, I totally could yeah, look at it. Put your, right, right, your nutsack right, right. away. Yeah. I will not be checking those I actually those don't want to look at that mole actually, on the bottom. You should look at that though. <laughs> <laughs> but, and, but it's got to be almost dangerous, right? With like uh, liability. Well, yeah, there is uh, something called practicing cocktail medicine. Okay. Mm-hmm. Where over drinks, someone asks you some casual oh, medical advice right. and you're yeah. like, oh yeah, you should do this. And then something negative happens to them. They could technically sue you. And that's because you're a doctor. Yes. Because if I tell someone they should drink yeah. more caffeine. Yeah, you don't have a license. Got it. Right. Yeah. But you still I listen to me. I cannot believe that my bike injury from grade eight might be the reason why I get gobble balls. Mm-hmm. I, I think that it, it was the beginning of a lot. Is there something wrong with Jeremy if he makes an, <laughs> an excessive amount of earwax? Oh, we got to talk about this. Also, I want to put him on blast right now really quickly in front of you that he uses Q-tips. And no, I, need so, you, oh. I need you to talk him out of it. Please. No, I forgot. I please, forgot. Please, Dr. Mike, cons- talk him out of it. We have a conspiracy therapist on the pod today. Dr. Mike doesn't believe in shoving Q-tips that have been in a container <laughs> Getting wet and dry, wet and dry over and over again for the last three months in your ear. Wait, you use the same one? No, I'm saying, but like if, <sighs> if it's in that little glass container in my shower, Imagine. I know the moisture's probably hitting it a little bit. Oh, you mean like it's in like little, you know, they're little, new though. 
Yeah, I'm not reusing Q-tips. That, you, you oh, said they, they were is, getting moist and dry, moist and yeah, dry. Yeah, that is misleading. But I feel like if it's it's a little glass container, I'm, I thought about this at least. On, like, on I think you think about how they might be getting a little bit moist if you're not thinking about ramming it into your ear. If, uh, there's so many, there's like six things in life that bring me joy and that's four of them, okay? So we're, we're not Wait, taking that away what are the me. four? His four ears. Lauren, Lauren, and then Q-tips. So that's three. <laughs> Moose diggy. <laughs> okay, oh, we're all over the place. Please talk him out of this. Well, what is the goal of you using- I'm gonna Q-tip? scratch the inside of my brain. Cause it's itchy. <laughs> no, but I look forward to that little that little feeling the oh. same way I look forward to cracking my back when I wake up in the morning. Mm. Yeah. That's a separate issue. And also every time I do it, more comes out of my ears than I would imagine others. That's hard for you to know. Right. How many years do you look into? Uh, I actually, Compared to my ears, about it's, it's about 1,400 times as much. Well, you're a larger person. Thank you. <laughs> I, I've tried the squirt uh, thing that I've, yeah. I've, I've bought several Instagram products for it. It doesn't It doesn't do it for me. Well, again, do what? What are you hoping? Like I wanna, do, your ears naturally clean themselves. You know, what, you, know what, you know what I want? I want my AirPods to not be caked. Mm. So in a preventive fashion, you could use mineral oil. Mineral oh. oil? Mm-hmm. Is that stuff that crackles and like- No, that's the- hydrogen peroxide. Okay. Mm-hmm. That oh. works too, but as a preventive, might be a little aggressive. It can dry out the air. So w- mineral water? Mineral oil. Mineral oil. Where does one acquire mineral oil? Pharmacy. Okay. Is it, oh, is it like a, you have to get a prescription no, for it? No, no, oh. no, no. It's just like an over the counter. And then what do we do with it? Just put a few drops. And then what? Like every two, three weeks. And I'll decrease the amount. Two of- to three weeks? Mm-hmm. You don't have to do it often. Should this be a daily thing if there's more though? No. <laughs> it's not going to be that much. <laughs> Earwax comes out. Right. Oh, I can see that's them the out. problem. Normally. Wait, how? Where? Like it's supposed to come out. Where's it go? How's it come out? Just falls out of your ear. That's what the Q tip's ah! for. It's to clean the outside where the earwax is coming out. No, no, you gotta get, you gotta scratch your brain. No. Yeah, you oh, so how far can a Q-tip actually go in? It shouldn't go in. I should be able to tape one oh. to the next. It should be only superficial cleaning. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You're, <laughs> I mean, that's why when you use those. Uh, earwax drops, like the Debrox drops, yeah. what happens is it softens the wax so it comes out more readily throughout okay. the day. And then you could use the Q-tip on the outside of the ear. Right, oh. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try this. Where I'm stuck is that I, I know how much he makes and when you're saying that it comes out throughout the day, I'm like, where the fuck did it go in our house? Right, well, I mean, that's what dust is. Jeremy's earwax. Yeah, and skin cells. Yeah. Our, our house I remember is just I learned that in like second in, grade. Yeah. It's like, dude, Earwax. just humans. Everywhere. Oh my God. Okay, yeah. well, I'm changing subject. This is so glorious and wonderful. <laughs> and unfortunately, I don't think we talked about it. So I'm still a little concerned. I, I'm going to try um, the method. This yeah. is where he's in the contemplation phase. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Is we, that where he's at? Yeah. What comes after the contemplation phase? Action. Action. Mm. We'll okay. follow up in a couple of weeks and I'll let you know okay. if, if mineral oil makes it to our house. Because I think before this, he was pre contemplation. And then we got into contemplation. Mm. I'm pretty decided I on- I think plan comes next and then action. And, and real quick, what, what's the worst case scenario of me shoving a Q-tip down my Infection, brain? Infection, or you could rupture your tympanic membrane if someone comes in while you're using it, which happens a lot. My what membrane? Tympanic membrane, your eardrum. Are you sure that I have that? Yeah. Okay. <gasps> Fairly confident. Okay. Humans have that. <laughs> and it could got rupture it. if he hits it too hard. Well, if he hits a period with the- like, with the Q-tip. Sticking into the- That's good technique, all. by yeah. the way. Yeah, you, you've seen me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why the elbow's out. If a door hits you or someone walks into you, oof. Oh. Oh, oh. I see, I see, I see. And then it super ruptures. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, pass on that. Yeah, don't do that. No, I don't like that. And don't buy any products off TikTok. Ever? Medically. Lauren. Medically. Lauren. Are you buying medical products no, off TikTok? No, no, medical buy call her out. What do you- <laughs> What have I bought medically off TikTok? I, I, literally, I'd have to go look through the receipts, but there, if if you see something on TikTok that is even remotely interesting, it's here tomorrow. There's a few like neck pressure point thingies that- Oh, well that's, feel, that's yeah. not medical. Yeah, really? That's, yeah. that's Your entertainment. Neck medical? That's yeah. entertainment. Yeah, it's true. You're right. Yeah. You're right, right. She likes the little back scratch. Yeah, 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 yeah like a little, a little back scratch. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you also did like the, with the, the, the acupuncture needle thing. You just lay on. It's not an acupuncture oh, I remember that. needle. Yeah, yeah, it's like the, I, I bought that one. It was one, a the, mat. The Some kind of mat. eco mat or something. Yeah, yeah I didn't love that. I yeah, like the either. the one that's got the two like pokey, they're like rounded little nubs and they just yeah, sit into that mean. back. That could feel good. Yeah, the one that like, the, uh, whatever the muscles are. Like, you know why she's buying head. it though, right? Because I don't rubber yeah. back. I, I, doc, yes, come thank on, you. Dude. What are you doing yeah. here? Well, that's, that's the medication right there. You should have taken your shirt off. Okay. Yeah, a real man would have done that. Next topic, whatever. Have you ever 
embarked on a quest to find a new doctor, reaching out to everyone you know for their recommendations, you seek a physician who truly understands you, actively listens to your concerns, and creates a sense of utmost comfort. After weeks of diligent searching, you finally discover the one. Oh my God, you find you finally find a doctor who is close to home, seems to work out of a clean, calm, and stress-free environment. All very important things to me. Yes, well, imagine that you excitedly reach out to their office and discover an available appointment. The receptionist informs you that this ideal doctor does not accept your insurance. It's a really low moment, trust me, I've been there, going through it currently as we speak. That's when you visit ZocDoc to locate and book a doctor who meets your needs and accepts your insurance. ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top rated patient review doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance, are located near you and treat almost any condition you're searching for. These docs all have verified reviews from actual real patients, not bots. That is definitely one of the best features of ZocDoc and is a huge reason why I use it. When you're looking for restaurants to try, you always check the reviews, right? Well, always, diligently, yeah, no, I do, and, meticulously. And pictures and the reviews of the <laughs> pictures and the comments on the pictures. But anyway, well, why wouldn't you do the same when you're looking for a doctor? The average wait time to see a doctor booked on ZocDoc is between just 24 and 48 hours. That is it. You can even score a same day appointment. So once you find the doc you want, you can book them immediately with just a few app taps. No more waiting, no more waiting awkwardly on hold with a receptionist. App taps. And go to ZocDoc.com slash wild and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash wild. Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash wild. Okay, on a more serious note, um, there's been all this news about aspartame getting recategorized mm, yes. into a new level of carcinogen. But I, I saw a TikTok person, and you tell me if this is true or not, that I would have to drink an asinine amount of Diet Coke for it to actually come to a level that is concerning. I hate this like WHO cancer classification scale okay. for the general public. I okay. like that it exists for us in the medical community, mm. but for the general public, it's hella confusing. Yeah. Right. Because like they'll put tobacco smoking and processed meat consumption in the same category. What and the it's fuck? not based on the likelihood that you will get cancer. Okay. It's not like they're equally as bad. Like eating bologna is not is not the same level uh, as, as smoking yeah. cigarettes. But the evidence to show that eating, overeating processed foods and smoking, the evidence is equal in strength. Sure. Okay. Is it similar to like the, the in California when you walk into any building? Oh, uh, that is that is Prop 65 or whatever yes. it is. Oh, he's triggered. I hate that. It's similar, right? <laughs> like it, 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 you'd have to eat 937 of these Not things. Not even about that. Right. Okay. Here's why that is awful. And the person who started it needs to apologize, come forward and say I had great intentions, but now there's bad outcomes. Right. Here's the bad outcome. When you see it, does it change your actions? No. Why? Because I see it everywhere. Yes. Everywhere. So that is a known principle in medicine called alarm fatigue. Mm. Um. So when we're in the ICU, if there's an alarm constantly going off, right. we rush to shut it off. Because the second our ears start becoming accustomed to hearing an alarm and not doing anything, you the next time- Tuning it out. It's yep. like the boy who cried wolf all over California. Right. Interesting. And, and, and so should we be concerned? We should be concerned that California needs to update this <laughs> proposition 60. I don't even know what it is. Yeah, but it's like- It's ridiculous. If there's any form of anything that could potentially cause yes. cancer, right, right. Like it needs to be updated or upgraded or something. Right. Because right now Specified. it's Specified. Yes. So, because it's too vague and it makes everyone, yeah, okay. So going back sense. to the aspartame idea, right? Yeah. Why is this, why, I'm not sure, maybe, and you probably aren't researched on this thing that no, happened no, no, three I'm, minutes I'm, ago. But I'm like, fairly researched on it. it they, they call it a possible carcinogen, okay. that there's possibility. That's like the category lo level that they put it in. And what we do with that is still uncertain. Okay. My take on the diet sodas in general, like what I tell my patients as a general philosophy is if you're replacing a very sugary soda because mm -hmm. you over drink these things and you already have risk factors, meaning you're very high weight, you have heart disease, you have diabetes, replacing it with an artificial sweetener will probably help you to some degree. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if you're drinking regular water and now all of a sudden you're like, oh, I like a little fake sugary thing and I'm drinking a ton of these a day, not ideal. 
Because there's also been some research to show that forgetting the cancer portion of it, the link, that there's also been disrupt disruptions with the gut microbiome, which is the bacteria that lives mm -hmm. in your gut. And nothing's really well proven here. So this isn't about fear mongering. This is just about if you do it occasionally, who the hell cares? Right. Life has so many risks, not worth even talking about. Right. But if you're going to make a huge lifestyle change, where you're like, I'm going to change every water that I drink every morning and at lunch for artificial sweetener, maybe best not to do that. But if you really want to, and it brings you so much joy, <laughs> my God, I'm not going to spend the whole medical appointment trying to dissuade yes. you from doing it. Because hyper, hyper optimization is where medicine fails. Ooh, say more. And that's everything that we see on TikTok. That's everything we see yeah. in medical media. Mm. Everyone wants you to hyper optimize everything. And the enemy of good in medicine is trying to be perfect. Yeah. Right, right. Because in medicine, anytime you want to have an effect, there's always a side effect or the opposite effect. That's just the way homeostasis works, that balance your body's trying to keep. Mm -hmm. If you overwarm something, you'll try and cool. If you cool something, you'll try and warm. Everything always will work this stop. way. It's stop like, it, stop it. I'm when I get in the car and I'm hot, I put the AC on as cold as it can go at 10. And then I get too cold and then I have to rebalance myself. Are See? You, are you familiar with the sleep bait? The, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the I thing. actually had to call them out on Twitter the other day. <gasps> Why? Tell us. No, it's not nothing wow. dramatic. Uh, they sent me one. Okay. And I was sleeping in it. I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. And like yeah. the second week in, I wake up and I'm freezing. I'm like, why am I so cold? I'm like, I got to stop being a baby. Just, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Wake up even more cold two hours <gasps> later. I'm like, was maybe, maybe I'm it was, sick. It was autopilot, wasn't it? No, it ruptured. Oh. One of the veins inside broke <laughs> and I was soaking wet. But you know how That's your body so can't cold. tell yeah. if it's cold or I, wet? I just learned this. Yeah. I didn't realize that when like when we feel laundry, mm -hmm. we're just feeling if it's like a temperature. We can't actually tell if it's wet. Yeah. Did you, I was literally just telling you about this. Yeah, yeah. That's wild. Mm -hmm. that I, also, what a useful piece of information that we didn't get like taught earlier. You know like, what's also pretty cool? You might find this gross because you don't like buttholes. I, <laughs> or whatever she said earlier. I, no, it, I, you're right. Your rectum actually has a sensor in it to know when you're about to fart versus if there's solid matter there to prevent an accident. So then- Tell that to every hang on. third so what about, boy. What about, the oh, come on. what about the sharders though? I feel like we have so many friends who shard. Accidents happen. It's not a hundred, it's not full. <laughs> <laughs> they, they need to get their rectum sensor cleaned. Yes, yeah. but it happens. <laughs> I love that. So like we, we Especially are- Especially if there's like diarrhea or something. But like you have a bodily reason to understand whether or not you're gonna shit yourself or not. Yes. Okay, so talk to us. Because you need to control your bowels. Yes. Right. So we, I don't know if you practice this, but we are actually, if it was a religion, we'd be like top tier. We, when we go to a trip, every time we leave the house, we make sure that we have enough underwear on us so that we can shit ourselves three oh, times yeah. a day for seven days straight. Wait. What? <laughs> I'll say it again. Run that back. No worries. No worries. We pack so that we can shit I feel ourselves. Like you need to preface the context. That you mean like when you're going on vacation yes. or you're going to a gas station? Uh, vacation. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, so vacation, we seven days. Yeah. You're bringing 21, 21 pairs. At least. At least. Because we're that afraid that our sensor is going to stop. Has, has there been a precedent set for this? We literally never. So never. Where, where is the fear stem from? I don't know. Are you traveling into places that don't sell underwear? No. No, we, there's there's a plethora of underwear. Yeah, and our and we do have credit cards that would work there too. Interesting. And we're actually not even that adventurous as far as eaters go. So it's not like we're like, oh, I had to try this spice here. Now that we're no, we'll cool. probably get the vanilla, unseasoned, whatever type of diet. Yeah. Um, are we alone in that? I've never heard of it. <laughs> do you ever get tired of people ex assuming that you just have this um, overwhelming knowledge on everything? Okay, the but only, he does. The only thing that upsets me is that I don't have. The answers, meaning sure. like, it's not even like, if, if you were to Google what you just asked me, it'll give you the same answer. So, mm -hmm. but it's not the answer you're looking for. Sure. You want to know, is it every time, do I have it? And I want to give you that answer. Mm -hmm. But part of what the YouTube channel is, is educating people that like, no matter who it is, AI, Google, doctors, we don't have all the answers. Right. Because we haven't really understood the body that well. Mm -hmm. And everyone's so different and things change and it's really confusing. That's why like, Limited intervention when needed. Yeah. Otherwise, enjoy life. Let it roll. Right. Yeah. It, drink your Diet Coke. Bring your underwear. It really is about balance. Bring it? your underwear and drink your Diet Coke. That yeah. is the motto to my life. That really is That your is the, the motto to my life. Uh, go ahead. Um, Is there a world where- Oh God. <laughs> this is, I was like, I was nervous for you and I because I'm a hypochondriac. Um, can too much fiber make you not poop? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, yes. this is not on our conversation. Depends sheet. on the fiber, but it can happen. <laughs> 
Okay. There's some fiber supplements that can actually uh, create gas, uh -huh. can cause some constipation. In some people, it can cause diarrhea. But like, it's rare. It usually makes you more regular. Yeah. But in some people, it can cause hmm. opposite effect. Yeah, I've been trying to... <laughs> Lauren? <laughs> no, but the, the, the bowel system is one that doesn't get enough credit. Uh, let's what do, you do mean? a fun fact about it. So that okay. it, it lowers our defenses talking about it. Okay. Anything that's in your digestive system is technically not inside your body. Stop. Yeah, hang on. Hold on. My brain needed a moment Stop. to digest that. Just could say that. Could you say that one more time? And this time I'm going to listen better. Okay. If I don't, I'm not recommending doing this. If I put a penny yeah. into my mouth or a piece of gum and I swallow it and it doesn't get digested and it's somewhere in my digestive tract, that's not in my body. Right. Because it came from the what? world and it comes back out into the world. It, it was always in the world. What is inside our <laughs> GI tract is not inside our body. Right, 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 right. What right, is right, it right, inside? Right. It's inside it, a tube. Your, your GI tract, your tube. Which is open. In our body? Yeah, yeah, because it butthole to mouth. Yep. Hold on. What? Huh? Butthole to... Oh, it's like, okay, got it. So it's like, it's like the interstate. Yeah. And once you get off the interstate, then you're in the body. But if you're on the interstate, you're not in the body. Yep. Got it. It was the cops and rappers metaphor that I needed. So should I eat less fiber to poop more if too much fiber is making me not poop? <laughs> Discussion you need to have with your doctor. Not, yeah, not to make it personal, but how should I handle this? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't that cool about the- Yeah, that, that is really wild. It also makes me feel like the amount of- Worms are a good example of this because it's easier to see. Imagine Ooh. a worm you picked with a gut yeah. going through it. Right. So like anything that goes into the mouth of the worm and then comes out the butt. Right. It's never really in the worm. Did you right. see all of those TikToks of people who were like deworming themselves? Yeah, I, I yeah, saw what is that, that a little bit. I don't know what they're doing. Wait, that's crazy. And for those of us who weren't on deworm TikTok, what are you guys talking about? They, yeah, everyone know. was convinced that they had these parasites in them. So they would take, the, uh, what was the supplement or something they were taking? It was BS. Dr. Mike's magic pill, right? The BS. Yeah, Whatever and they- We have deworming medications. Yeah. Like for albendazole, mebendazole. Yeah, Rogan took it. No, 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 that's <laughs> ivermectin, but yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And so people were like, oh my God, the hugest worm just came out of me. And that's why my stomach has been so off because I've had this worm in me and people were convinced that they had all these parasites. You can have a worm in you, right? You can, yeah. Right. But that's not what these people on TikTok were doing. Right. Yeah, that is not what they were doing. Yeah. yeah they, they were like, I have no symptoms, but you know, I just wanted to try something and I took this thing. And and I put a link in my bio with an affiliate link in case you're yeah, also affiliated. Yeah, it's in my things. Amazon storefront if you want to go check it out. Maybe AI should take over. Maybe we're just, our time's done. Oh, <laughs> well, that's <God>. coming. <laughs> yeah. And that's scary. I, I would love to know your thoughts on AI and medicine. Well, right now it's really narrow, like in right. what it can do. And in, the, in some ways it can help us be better doctors. Like mm -hmm. it can check over what we're doing right. or maybe help us gather information and do better research. For example, like how often should I check a person with diabetes, their number of sh their sugar? Mm -hmm. Should I check it once a month, every three months, every four months? What's ideal? And throw all that information into AI and give me a better estimate. So for things like that, AI is great. What's it bad for? When AI starts becoming less narrow and more broad, uh -huh. where it starts mm -hmm. trying to replace doctors. Right. Or, and no one likes talking to a robot. Right. I think that's why people don't like when doctors look at computer screens instead of them. Sure. Yeah. So I actually got in trouble with that for residency. I would never have my notes done during the visit because mm -hmm. they say, you have to do the note in the room with the patient. I'm like, no, no, no I want to talk to the patient. Oh, right. I would have gotten in trouble with that too because yeah. I hate disconnecting. It and feels they, weird. And I was like getting the notes on the next day. They're right. like, no, you need to get it done. And I'm like, yeah, impossible. If you want to have an honest conversation. Right. What does a typical day look like for you? Bounce between doing obviously still like doctory things and mm -hmm. then also being a content creator. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> what do you think doctory things are? I'm curious. We got to put the lab coat on. Well, you're yeah, putting your lab coat on. Putting well, your I hands. haven't worn a lab coat in probably four years. Ooh. Really? Yeah. Got it. Huh? Well, I guess you're not doing doctory things then. Um, <laughs> she's like, lost well, your degree. I yep. don't know. Well, I, put, I wear scrubs. So, so what kind of doctory things are you doing? So I work three days a week or two mm -hmm. to three days a week, depending on the week, uh, in an outpatient medical center. Okay. Where anyone can come in for anything. Oh, wow. Literally anything. Like, we don't know what they have before they come in. That's quite like interesting throat, for her you. Her throat thing, she could come yes, in. Yes, exactly. Yeah. My, my throat and my fiber intake and my- yes. Dyslexia. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and my dyslexia. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, so people come in and all sorts of things and I have to play detective and figure it out. That's really interesting. It's really fun. Do you enjoy that 
exploration process? Oh, so much. That's yeah. why I always said if I wasn't a doctor, detective. Yeah. Oh, Ooh. interesting. Yep. Detective. Yeah. Very well, you know, House MD is based on Sherlock Holmes. I just learned that. No, no way. Yeah. Really? That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It does. That does it make does. sense. Yeah. Also, I feel like we like love people's like just genuine, like, oh, I know a little bit about a lot and I can apply it to real world situations mm -hmm. and kind of thing. How much of the doctoring detective experience is like not listening to what they're saying, but listening to the things that they're not saying? That's important. I feel like a lot of doctors not listening, like not listening a lot. Sure. Mm -hmm. And that's a problem. Because mm -hmm. they think that they know better than the patient. Yes. Yeah. And honestly, the patient's the expert. So you got to figure out what they're saying more so than you figure out what's going on. And none of that is more self-evident by the number one question I ask all my patients and I get the best answers from. What do you think is going on? Mm. Or what are you worried oh. about what this is? Because if I don't address that as a doctor, right. I failed in the visit. Sure. Mm -hmm. And then also sometimes I'll say, what do you think it is? And then someone will be like, I think it's cancer. And I'm yeah. like, well, why do you think it's cancer? And they're like, well, because I read online that if I vomited blood, that means it could be cancer. I'm like, wait, you didn't tell me you vomited blood. Right. They're like, right. oh, I forgot to tell you that. Right. And now- Like my bike. Like my, my, bike. My, my, bike. my throat See? to bike story. What, throat to bike story? <laughs> yeah, my throat to bike Which story. Which is not the ass to mouth story. <laughs> Which is not the ass to mouth <laughs> story. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also heard that, so I have a metaphobia. Do you know what that is? Metaphobia? A metaphobia. Does that mean you don't like Facebook? Cro close. Super close. close. Yeah, close. Super close. It's like Metaverse um phobia? irrational fear of throwing up. Oh, okay. And um, I heard that your like one trigger that you are not gagging. good with is gagging. Mm -hmm. In the hospital setting. In the hospital setting. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> that Hold on, stop. <laughs> that was funny. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because like my nephew has thrown up before in front of me and I can hold his hair back and be fine. Right, but, but for not. some reason in the hospital, maybe because we're not related. Oh, or so something. specifically, it, it's in the hospital like, setting. Well, like strangers. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay, okay, right. So it's if it's not holding the hair back, giving them the pat on the back, being like, yeah. "You're gonna be okay. You shouldn't mm -hmm. have that tequila shot." Yeah. Also, like, I see. not that you're not responsible for your nephew, but it's like you're just doing your best here. It's not like you're like in your mode. Maybe I don't know what it, it's mental. You know, yeah. the mind is confusing. But yeah. that's like I remember vi very vividly. My nephew was like nine years old, and it was his first time throwing up, mm -hmm. and he was oh. so scared of it. And I'm like. Don't be scared. Like you're fine, and it, no problem. Do you think right. it's because you also had to be like, maybe not his professional, but like his his family there? Maybe there was like a sympathy thing. I don't yeah. know. I like to think I have sympathy for my patients. Yeah. The, the time where it happens to me specifically is if we put NG tubes, which are nasogastric tubes, you put a tube into the nose that's supposed to bypass the gag reflex and go into the stomach for like feeding purposes of a patient's not able to swallow mm -hmm. on their own, or if you need to pump their stomach because they have a bleed or whatever, something's going on from an obstruction. And sometimes it can coil in the mouth <gasps> and the patient's like semi kind of awake and they start gagging. Oh my God, that feeling for me, terrible. At least they're semi out, right? Yeah, but it's, I, I struggle and like I've had to ask residents to take over. But, but is, by the way, is that, is that acceptable? Like, or is that like looked down upon? I mean, if you're gonna look down upon it, what are you gonna do? You're going, right, yeah. yeah, yeah, you yeah it's that. not yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. I just like in my life, if like, if I need help on something or like, I think something's better at something like, hey, step in here. Yeah, so of it's course. Not like, yeah. It's I mean, unless you're trying to learn to be better. Mm -hmm. Right. But like, I'm not learning over somebody else's health. I'm learning yes. over like making money. It's which, probably like if, if you needed to uh, like ask help for every needle, maybe you should find a new profession. Right. Or, or like, like if blood freaked you out. Yeah, like don't yeah. be a phlebotomist. Yeah. Right. Right. And that's, that by the way, that's why I stepped out of being a phlebotomist. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, was, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that, the only reason. That was the reason. Yeah. That was the reason. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so, yeah, you've got, but that's not, so it, it does, is there a, is that a, is that a metaphobia or is that a different than you just having a, a I don't a, know the exact definition of metaphobia. Metaphobia is just like the, um, the fear of throwing up in front of others. I think some people have it in specific, yeah. more specific settings. For me, Web, it's- WebMD web emetophobia, Shoshana. Yeah, what is the actually the, uh, the like WebMD definition? But for me, it's just like, it's the anticipati anticipatory anxiety around throwing up. Mm. So it's not actually about throwing up. Last time I threw up and I had food poisoning, like the actual action of it, I was like, oh, this is actually quite fine. And I feel so much better after, mm -hmm. but it's feeling nauseous for me that sends me into panic attacks, mm. especially in an environment where I feel like I. I'm not in control. So somewhere like trapped on an airplane, if I mm. feel sick there or in a car that I'm not driving. So my whole thing is with phobias, it's usually an irrational fear of something. 100%. And what you're presenting is really rational. Like if you're I on a plane done. and you're gonna need to throw up and you have nowhere to throw up, 
you should be a little anxious. Yeah. Don't tell me that. You're undoing my therapy. <laughs> what do you mean? But like, because, so normal. So no, right, but right. But in my mind, like- I'm validating your so, experience. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. My therapist- I'll just be worried enough. <laughs> <laughs> you should be more worried. Yeah. But I, I, in that setting, I, my therapist, my post-therapy work brain would be saying to me, you're not the first person who's ever been sick on an airplane. You're not gonna die. There are, oh yeah, extreme, extreme. fear. Yeah, yeah, but it, it's the irrational fear of vomiting. But that's the thing, it's, you're, I don't think yours, I mean, at least the way you're describing it, doesn't seem extreme. It used to be. I've okay. done, so I've done, done some work. I've done a ton of therapy on it. Like it very much used to like control my life. I'm also on the, like the right combination of medications that's helped with like anxiety and depression overall. Cool. But I think like I've done so much work in like very much believe in neuroplasticity of being able to rewire my brain and mm. rethink all of the scenarios. So even like when you said that, my mind immediately was like, no, because it's not the worst things ever happened. I'm going to be okay. I'm not the first person that like I started listing off rationally in We're my mind. Really good. Where's, oh yeah, I got a little tattoo and it says, what if, then what? So it's like, so what if I did get sick on an airplane? Then what am I gonna do? I'm yep. like, okay, well, I'd either go to the bathroom. Okay, well, what if there's a line for the bathroom? Okay, we find a little- There's a bag in front bag. of you. <laughs> Put your face in yeah. it. But like even seeing the barf bag used to be really triggering for me because it would remind me that people have been sick. Do I feel sick? Am I gonna feel sick? And so it used to be really like all life encompassing, but a lot of work has gone into it and my therapist is great. I mean, you have opened up my head so much to how real those types of like internal challenges are. Yeah. Cause I'm not someone who gives, well, gave much weight to any of it. And I would mm -hmm. I'd very quickly be the guy who's like, nah, they're fine. They're overreacting. Yeah. I see it. I see it like, oh, yeah. a bad day is a bad day. And I don't care how not real it is for me. It's very real for her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why when people come in and Let's say I they come in to see me for a physical cause of pain and they're like, my back hurts, whatever. And, uh, you know, I'll do an exam, maybe even get some imaging and I don't see an anatomical cause of this said pain. And I'm telling them that I'm leaning towards it being a mental cause mm -hmm. of their pain. A lot of times they're quick to say something like the doctor thinks it's all in my head yeah. or it's not real. You hear that all the time. That is not what I'm actually saying as a doctor because the pain is real. Pain mm -hmm. is subjective. So mm -hmm. if you're feeling it, you're feeling it whether it's anatomical or mental, is just the cause of the pain. Mm -hmm. But it's still real. You're still experiencing those symptoms. Because if I was to kick you in the shin right now, your heart rate would go up. Yeah. Like there would be physical signs that you're experiencing pain. If she has a panic attack episode regarding vomiting, she will have those same symptoms. So it's real, the cause is different. Yep. And it's okay for one cause to be physical and one cause to be mental. And there's ways that you can ease your pain, you know, rubbing your shin to distract yourself or you doing the what if strategy. Mm -hmm. Those are all strategies and mm -hmm. they're all equally re respectful. So it's good that you have that. Yeah, no, I I think having like your anxiety mental toolkit have having different approaches has been really, really good yeah. for me. Um, That's something I think our, our generation has trouble with a lot though. Differentiating between true anxiety yeah. and irrational anxiety. Interesting. Okay, so what are your thoughts on that? So if there's a lion in the other room mm -hmm. and we're worried about how we're going to get out safely, should we feel anxious? Probably. Probably a little bit. I yeah. mean, a little bit. Yeah. There's Probably a lion. A lot. Probably a lot. Yeah. Is, like, is he throwing up though? <laughs> is the lion throwing up? <laughs> yes. <laughs> now it's gotten really scary. Do I have my Q-tips? Yes. Yeah, do oh, we have Q-tips? Oh, I'm fine. That's your soothing technique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's it's the generation, the generation of having trouble differentiating how anxious. Well, appropriate anxiety mm -hmm. versus anxiety that's now becoming problematic. Right. Or the same thing with depression. Mm -hmm. So I'll have adolescents come in that will start saying that they're depressed. And when I ask what's going on in their life and they, they think they need a medication or that they're broken even, and I'm asking what's going on and their friend just died. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, you're not depressed. This is like I see your saying. reaction to what's happening is appropriate. Right. And feeling sad is important, just like feeling cold and hot is important. It goes back to that balance thing. Mm -hmm. And knowing when it's getting to the point of you need to seek help mm -hmm. is the barometer that we need to improve I as see. a generation. Yeah. Right, right, right. Because that's where we're bad at. We're either we're living in the era of extremes. Yeah. We're either all need to be coddled and every emotion I have is terrible and I need to escape my body mm -hmm. or I'm a rock and I'm so strong and I'm Joe Rogan. I would never take, I, I mean, will never, yeah. Pain. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like 
it doesn't need to be either of the extremes. Mm -hmm. Like it needs to find some middle ground and then there will be variation. Some people will fall naturally to the extremes. Right. Not by their choice, genetically. Yeah. That's what uh, like a standard deviation curve would look like. But we're living like with way too many people in the extremes right now because they start falling into these echo chambers mm -hmm. yeah. or into the hyper supportive groups in one end versus the other. And the only way we can learn is with a really good guide from like a mental health specialist mm -hmm. to help you figure out what's going on in your life and your emotions. And one that's not afraid to challenge you. Right. Yeah. Because some will be very placating and that could be positive. Some will be too challenging and that could be problematic. So it really depends. You made mention of that, the whole, uh, you get really bad care when you can't afford anything and you yes. get really bad care when you can afford everything. Yes. Yeah. And like that- Because then you're like, I can just buy health. Totally. Can't buy health. Totally, yeah. yeah. Can't buy health. You can buy a shortcut to think what you want. Yes. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. There are moments in our lives when we come across challenging decisions, whether these decisions are concerning your professional life, personal relationships, or any other aspects. I've been going through, I've been going through a little bit of a rut at the moment. And I feel like I feel like I'm on the upswing out of the rut though. It, but I just know all too well the feeling of not knowing what to do next and where to go. It can be extremely unmotivating and make you feel super alone. BetterHelp has been a huge help in guiding me through this time and helping me feel like I have a little more control over my life and my decisions. Trust yourself to make those decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash WT9 to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp. H E L P dot com slash W T nine. Ready to ditch the usual car services and swipe right on something different? Let's talk about Turo. Think of it as the Tinder for cars, but without the awkward small talk or unsolicited eggplant emojis. Turo is here to redefine the way you think about booking a car. Say see ya to the old way of doing things and hello to a world of options right at your fingertips. Ready for that road trip you and your friends have been planning? Got a special event or working with a budget. Well, Turo has you covered. With Turo, you can book spacious SUVs and minivans, show up to a classic or luxury car that screams, I've arrived, or find an affordable economy car that will simply get you from point A to B. I recently just got a new Tesla and luckily because Jeremy already owns one, I was able to test it out and see if I really wanted it or not. Turo is like a taste test for cars. Many Turo hosts will even deliver the car right to you. No trekking across town, no lines, no hassle. Whether you're in the US, the UK, Canada, or Australia, remember, Turo's got your back. Every trip is backed by liability insurance, terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Find your drive, forget boring rental cars at Turo.com. But it doesn't really exist. And look, don't get me wrong. If you don't have the resources and you can't afford your basic medications or you don't have health insurance, that's a really big problem, yep. especially in the United States. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if you're one of these billionaires that thinks, oh, I'm gonna go into an executive health program and I'm gonna buy the future of health, you're gonna be scanning and finding things that aren't really problems that we don't have research for, that's not validated. We don't know what to do with it. And as a result, you're gonna get bad recommendations. So yeah, like, right. That you pay cash it's, for. That you pay cash for. I mean, pay, they don't yeah. care about that. Right, <laughs> yeah. right. But like, I never thought about like more money and more resources might not always be a great thing if like it gets you this like shortcut to the thing that you think you need. Yeah, it's yeah. that whole thing of not striving for perfect with health and being good. Yeah. Again, there's so many risks. There's yeah. so many things outside of your control. I can't begin to tell you the issues that my patients face on a day-to-day -day basis. So when someone comes in on a podcast and says, this is the solution. If you go into cold water immersion for two minutes and 37.4 seconds, oh my God. that's <laughs> when you get optimal and results. And cold plunges. And I'm like, <laughs> if you go in for two minutes, that's great. If you, if you don't go in at all, that's great. Thoughts on the cold plunge? If you like it, enjoy it. Oh, I hate it. I wouldn't do it. Then don't, don't do it. Yeah, there's no world where I'm cold yeah. plunging. There's it just, no like, world. It's nothing I'm ever going to spend time with on my patient's life. Yeah. Because it's not <laughs> going to change Listen, if you anything. can't afford a bathtub of yeah. ice water yeah. every morning before the kids are up, listen, I think you're going to die. Yeah. That's it. It's just That's like just it's so you. <sighs> you know what it is? It's the difference 
most people who go on these podcasts and have viral moments and clips cut like that mm -hmm. are people who are either very heavy into research or are researchers themselves, mm -hmm. as opposed to clinicians, which is what I am. I see patients in the my real office, people. the real world yeah. and the practical implications yes. of hearing this advice. And it's always disastrous sure. yeah. unless it's for entertainment. Yep. So if you like cold plunging, if you like tracking your steps, have fun with it. Right. But don't make medical promises off of it because right. it's not real. What are your thoughts on Ozempic? Ooh. I feel like mm -hmm. it's been something that, especially living in LA, like we know, you know, tons of people on it and it has been pretty shocking, the results with um, weight loss, whether mm -hmm. people are diabetic or not. So what are your thoughts? Well, so the interesting thing about Ozempic is initially the type of class of medications it is started off as being a diabetes med. Mm -hmm. And then people started losing weight on it. So people started using it off label. Okay. And then they launched a new medication, which is basically the same medication, slightly different dosage for just FDA approved for weight loss. Oh, okay. And the company's racking in millions of dollars, yes. if not billions Isaac. of dollars mm -hmm. doing this. And that's not to shame them. They made a medication that actually works and it helps people lower their risks. Mm -hmm. But just like anything in medicine, there's risks and benefits. And you have to calculate that to each individual person mm -hmm. before you start labeling things as all good or all bad. Right. So I have a problem when doctors say, oh, this is a shortcut and you're not really going to learn anything. It's BS. And at the same time, I have a problem with doctors who are like, this is the magic bullet that we've been waiting for in healthcare. Right. Neither of those things are true. Okay. And it really needs to be individually focused and balanced. Also with the understanding that if you're just trying to lose a few pounds with this, it's even worse because the mm. benefits that you have for it come at the uh, at the benefit of decreasing the risk of all like the conditions that come with carrying a lot of extra weight. Right. So the heart disease, the yep. strokes. But now if you have only a small amount of weight that you're trying to lose that's not clinically meaningful, mm -hmm. now you have no real benefit outside of maybe changing the way you look for yourself, right. but all the risk of taking the medication. Sure. Right. And sure. it's supposed to be taken long-term, correct? Like it's not for someone to like, who wants to lose 10 pounds for them to take Ozempic for, you know, however many months come off of it. Yeah, that's not what it's made for. And then would they gain the weight back? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, not everybody, Yeah. but generally speaking, yes, you gain the weight back because the way the medicine works is it slows gastric emptying. Okay. So basically the way the GI system works, that tube where the things that are not really inside your you, body. The, the penny. Thing, the thing you crush? Yes. yes. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the stomach can slow its emptying by taking this medicine. And when that happens, you feel fuller longer. Mm -hmm. You're not as hungry as often. It changes the hormonal profile within your body. And as a result, you eat less. Mm -hmm. If you take too much of the medicine, like if you start too high of a dose and you don't titrate it appropriately, you could actually get nausea, you get vomiting because right. right. the gastric emptying is so slowed. Right. And that's where the side effects come in from people that don't like it or maybe it has a way too strong effect on them. And that's why we start on a low dose and work our way up. Yep. Also work with a team that's also trying to help you make sure that when you cut calories that drastically, you got to make sure you're still consuming enough proteins to mm -hmm. maintain your, your body organs, your muscle mass. Otherwise, you're going to be losing all this muscle as well. So it's like not just take the medicine and forget about it. It's like work with a team, work with a medical establishment to figure out how to do it safely. And I will say a lot of influencer people and media people are really abusing the med. Yeah, yeah. that's I mean, that's what kind of like our experiences that we've seen. And, and it's it's sad to see, I, I, I feel like I've known a few diabetics who have been using it forever. And so I knew the name and was familiar with it when people started using it for the wrong reasons. And I was like, oh my God, what is happening here? So it's it's sad to see for the people who need it, one, that it's becoming less available. And also two, that if someone's using it for the right reasons, there's becoming to have a stigma around as well too. Yeah, you know, it's hard to also know because of patient privacy, who's taking it for quote unquote, the right the reasons. The right reasons, yeah. So difficult to say, but- I just know of personal stories of people who are like requesting it for me just because they yes. want it for personal reasons. And yep. I'm like, no, like this is not what, this is not ideal for you. Like, yeah. I am actively doing harm and my oath is to first do no harm. Mm -hmm. So by prescribing it to you, I would be doing a disservice, but you'd be surprised like even in New York City, how many doctors are just willing to write a prescription as long as you're willing to pay them for a visit? Yeah, I think Cash. LA has a similar sentiment going yeah. through yeah. right now. That must be a city thing to, to a degree because I, I had never heard of like any doctor just having a cash version of that doctor until I moved to LA. Yeah. I come from the Midwest. You went to where my, I think it was an HMO at the time. Yeah. It, wherever my primary care told me to go to, that's the only people I could go to. And that's not the case in LA. 
Yeah, it's it's so tricky because I don't know how to talk about it without creating a stigma for the people who need the medication. Right, right. That's yeah. kind of like what totally. yeah, yeah, I've been I've and been And that's seeing. not just Ozempic. That's Adderall, that's Xanax, yeah. that's yeah. sleep medication. Mm -hmm. Because I see people who are in the line of work of media and they're like, no, no, I need Adderall because I want to be able to shoot multiple videos a day. Now I'm so wired, I need Xanax to fall asleep at night yes. or Ambien to fall asleep at night. And then I want Ozempic because I want to lose a few more pounds to be better on camera. And I'm like, this is not like this. This is unhealthy for you. Yeah. And the fact that there is a doctor at the end of the cycle who's actually writing these things. Yeah. It's tricky. I, I feel like it would be very difficult not to badmouth your own uh, profession uh, when you hear about these things. Because at the yeah. end of the day, it's like someone's writing these scripts. What is the hardest <laughs> part of being a doctor? Probably understanding the person sitting in front of you. Yeah. For me, it's easier in one regard because I'm a family medicine doctor, so there's continuity. So I'm seeing patients regularly. Right. Meaning like they've been my patient for three years. When they come in with a pain of eight, I know this patient and eight is not that big of a deal. Or there's a patient, there's an eight, I need to call 911 staff. Immediately. Right. right. And I know that because of my established long-term relationship with them. That's why I think everyone needs a good primary because you can have that relationship and you know one another. Um, but I think these days, a lot of people are doing the urgent care model. But yeah. like, I'll go when it's broken. Yeah. Right. And that's not- <laughs> Recommended. Ideal for health, good health outcomes. That's actually really bad. So context. How, yeah. Context. Yeah. How often should a healthy person get a checkup? Most people that are young and healthy, every year is a good place to start. Okay. If you start getting diagnoses, if you're taking a medication for blood pressure, for diabetes, it should be more often than mm -hmm. that. If you're making changes to medications, it should be even more often than that. Um, yeah, it's, it's personal dependent, but at least once a year. And then also, you know, for pap smears and things like that, starting at age 21. Like, for example, I saw in some practices, they're doing pap smears every year mm -hmm. starting age 21. And that's not what's recommended. Yeah. Like pap smears are supposed to be at age 21 every three years. And if you do HPV co-testing after the age of 30, you could spread that out for five years. And everyone's like, wait, what? My doctor has been giving me a pap smear every year. And I'm like, it's unnecessary. And that's exactly what people, no one wants tongs up their coochie. If you don't need to. If couldn't, you don't need to. Couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah, no one wants tongs <laughs> up their coochie. And, and also to give you some reassurance, we don't really do digital rectal exams for screenings anymore for prostate cancer. The, well, the digital one, it's, I'm not so afraid of. It's the analog version that I'm- That's the digital. Digits. This, these, oh. these are digits? We had a miscommunication there. Yeah. Tech world, medical world. In this stereo. Is, yeah. Oh boy. Dad. Oh my God. Yeah, my uh, family care doctor just, um, he quit actually. He will, he, he moved. So I'm in okay. the middle of uh, transferring Finding a to a new one. one. Okay. And it's a bit of a bitch. Gotta be honest. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. yeah. I think it's it's been interesting to kind of go through like employer healthcare to my own paid healthcare to back and forth and everything. Because mm -hmm. there's, when I worked in tech, I had no issues with insurance whatsoever. Now that I pay for my own, I, I'm shocked at how many things I have to get additional approvals for. Oh my God, Just yes. to get things filled. Cause I've been on Adderall for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And the amount of times that every every year now I have to get it renewed that I can be on Adderall. Mm -hmm. And they, they just said no to Vyvanse. Like they would not pay for it. Your insurance they, company. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it had to go to Adderall. And, and now that it's, it's interesting cause once one gets approved, the other one then falls into this weird list. And it's like, I've often thought to myself when I'm standing at the counter talking to the pharmacist and I just can't get things filled, even though I'm insured, even though it's been prescribed. And it's like, no wonder people turn to the, the weirdest and darkest places because yeah. Yeah. even if I am in the right place with the right information and I've gone through all the steps, yeah. I feel like I'm doing something wrong or I have to get additional clearances just to get the treatment that was already prescribed. And it drives me insane. Yeah, you're literally highlighting, I, we mentioned earlier about how the reason why people turn to the shortcuts yes. is because medicine sucks. Yeah. yeah. All of these experiences add up to you being like, wait, hold on a second. There's an app that I can just buy this. Right, right. Well, and yeah, also like, like, I didn't realize that we don't really like, I guess, manufacture our own drugs in America. Yeah, it's weird. There's like a lot of limitations yeah. put, especially on controlled substances of how much you oh. can make. And actually I had a doctor, a toxicologist, Dr. Ryan Marino on my podcast. And he was explaining that the real cause of the Adderall shortage is quite interesting. So I don't know if it was the FDA or DEA, they put a limit on how much Adderall is created and they have to do it 
before the year starts. Yes. Mm. And during the pandemic, because all these telemedicine waivers were given, meaning that you could now prescribe Adderall through telemedicine, which before you oh. couldn't do without a physical visit, yeah. the prescription spiked. And the thought behind it was that these were illegitimate prescriptions, right. people who didn't need them. So the FDA or DA, again, whichever agency, federal agency is doing this, said, we're not going to change the number of medications we're making. But now there's people who need it. Yep. Right. And there's not enough of it. So there's a shortage. The thing that really upset me more than anything was back when I did work in tech and the insurance was through tech. And obviously they have big, big plans. And of course, the bigger the plan, the more there are incentives yep. that go into it that I don't even understand. But I got a letter in the mail that said, hey, the pharmacist that you're going to is no longer covered. You need to go to one of the big ones, right? Mm -hmm. But the problem was the pharmacy I was going to, I knew the person, they knew yeah. me. When they got their shipment in, even if there was you know, a, a shortage of it, the people that would typically go there that they knew were in the neighborhood that like, always needed that medicine, mm -hmm. they, would, they would prioritize to make sure that it was taken care of. Now I only can go to the big ones. They don't care. And by they the way, care. I understand why they don't care because they have so many people in line screaming at them mm -hmm. every time I walk in. So it's like a, it's a, this is a weird game of incentives that seems to always end in the opposite place I feel like where most normal, sane, regular people would want it to be. I agree. And there's even less transparency than that. There's something called PBAs, which are pharmacy benefit managers. Okay. And these shadowy groups that, by the way, bring in billions of dollars in revenue. Yeah. Billions, like yeah. a lot of money, were initially created to negotiate on behalf of the insurers with the pharma companies to give us discounts on like which medicine they will pay for, which one they mm. won't. And if they buy all of these for all these patients, they would get a discount. Started saying, if we get them a discount, we want to take some piece. money of that. We oh, want a yes. piece. Oh my God. I was like, wait, yeah. you're incentivizing them to try and save money. Yeah. But now they realize that they can do it in unique ways that no one knows about. They can make themselves a whole ton of money. So very shadowy world we live in when it comes to fun. Oh my God. And it has nothing to do with medicine being corrupt right. from the doctor side mm -hmm. or that there's some kind of grand scheme of things. It just greed yeah. with capitalism, yeah. unfettered, getting a little bit out of control that needs some more reins pulled back on it, if you will. Right. But unless you understand it, no one's going to fix it. Right. And uh, politicians, they don't really understand it. Mm -hmm. They don't like to collaborate. Mm -hmm. No. All these rules are made uniformly by one person instead of getting a doctor, a practicing doctor, a researcher, a lawmaker, and getting everyone in the same room. No. Hmm. You travel a decent amount. How often have you had to put yourself forward in terms of like the, is there a doctor on board for a medical <laughs> oh. emergency? <laughs> I actually had that happen just before the pandemic. Oh, okay. Was flying to Israel. Mm -hmm. We're over the Atlantic Ocean. They say, is there a doctor on board? I'm like, oh, I'm gonna like <laughs> save the day here yeah, as a joke. Say, I feel like Superman. Yeah. <laughs> Did somebody say doctor? I've been waiting my whole education for this. Yes, it's about time. <laughs> Grey's yes. Anatomy, let's go. And I have a hoodie on, I have no shoes. I'm like, this is not how I imagined you it. You take your shoes off in planes? Heck yeah. Dr. Mike, come on. You know what, we had a Are podcast- Are you scared of bacteria? No. We had a podcast guest, podcast guest who just like raw dogs his legs out in the world with like shorty shorts and flip flops. And like, that's not okay to me. I just, I-, I But what are you worried about? Your feet, fine. I have seen- some hooves. But then there's socks on. Okay. okay. Oh, you got socks. That's oh, better. Yeah, yeah. It, okay. I, I've seen just straight yeah. toes. <laughs> well, if you're walking around barefoot, you're risking getting fungal infections and I, stuff. So. I'm, yeah. I'm, Especially in like public gyms where I'm, there's wet environments. Oh, yeah, no, I'm never. more worried about the plain carpet after the feet that I've seen mm. than I am those feet. But yeah, sorry. I have a whole video of weird things, weird weird things people do on planes. There's one person shaving their calluses. On the floor. <gasps> Absolutely not. I, what happened when they were growing up? I just, I, there's no way that that's the only that, thing that's yeah, that out that's of okay. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I like, okay, I, so over the, over the Atlantic, going to Israel. Yes, uh, they say, is there a doctor? Young gentleman comes in, rash on his hands. Um, I'm like, oh, do you have an allergy? He's like, maybe, I don't know, not really. I'm like, do you have Benadryl? He goes, yes. I'm like, take some and then let me know if anything it changes. Yeah. He comes, gets me like 30 seconds later. He's like, my throat's closing up. <gasps> so he's going into anaphylaxis, right? yeah. which means that his throat's going to close in a matter of seconds or minutes. And his blood pressure could also drop and he'd go into shock and all these other things. And I'm like, all right, where's your EpiPen? He goes, I don't have an EpiPen. I'm like, all right, Delta, give me your kit. I'll find the EpiPen in here. There's no EpiPen. The pilot comes out. He goes, do you want me to land? I'm like, well, where can we land? I thought we we're over the Atlantic. Right. He goes, hour back to Canada, hour and a <gasps> half to Portugal. I'm like, oh, you're like, oh, sweet, no, 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 no,
Wow. Yeah. That's like kind of cool. I'm in control. I'm the captain. That's kind of cool. Yeah. 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 You, you, you <laughs> Give me your hat. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, hold on a second. Before we talk about, because we're not landing. So I need to figure this out. I saw they had epinephrine, which okay. is the same medicine that's in an auto injector. Like EpiPen is a brand right. of one of them. Have one. And Expired. I'll, that's a problem. Yes. Is it? Big. I thought it was, isn't it okay for a couple years? That's okay for medicines that are not life-threatening. Like if your Tylenol is a year expired, probably not a big deal. just means it's maybe less effective. Okay. EpiPen, you want that to be okay, on brand right. and good. Quick reminder for everyone listening to go yeah. and just check the expiration. On your EpiPen. insulin, your EpiPen, all those okay. emergency medications. We'll work on that after. Continue. Anyway. Um, so <laughs> I'm like, okay, let me take the epinephrine and dose it appropriately, even Ooh. though I don't remember the exact dosage because yeah. sure. it's pre-dosed in right. one of these it, auto it injectors. Just ready to just yeah, and the needle on this thing that I got was like this thick yeah. instead of the cute little I'm, I'm, superficial I'm out needle. on that. Yeah, that in a big but needle. But Jeremy, Jeremy would let me, dies. yeah, yeah, he was gonna talk. Uh, he would let me die before having to put that in my leg How for big sure. is the needle? No, I'm out. And thick. No. Thick gauge. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yeah. I used to ask for the baby needles. Yeah, this was not a baby needle. So I was like, okay, if I don't do this, the throat, throat closes up. I have no idea how I cut into his throat. I haven't done that since residency. So I was like, pull your pants down. We're doing this right here in the middle of the plane. <laughs> Pulls his pants down. We inject it. Starts bleeding all over the place, <gasps> screaming. I'm like, oh my God, I hope I gave him the right dose. Because there's no Wi-Fi over the ocean. Yeah, yeah. And, and what liability, liability would you have? Well, if I don't do it, he dies. So I was like, I have to do it. Right. Yeah. Totally. <gasps> so I don't, I don't know. I, I think yeah. I'm a good Samaritan. But also, like, I mean, when you take the Hippocratic Oath, isn't mm -hmm. that the whole idea of you're, like, you're just doing your best always? Yes. So, I mean, kind of falls into that. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't being negligent. No. Yeah. That's, no. like, I guess where right. it would fall You're under. using the tools that you've got. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, if I don't, we know what happens in anaphylaxis. His throat was closing up. Right. If it closes, then he definitely dies. Sure. Right. So, I was like, let's try this. So you stick him. So, I stick him. His leg starts turning very pale. I'm like, get up, walk around. So he's walking around bleeding in the first class <laughs> cabin. Like, this is really weird now. Yeah. And uh, like 10 minutes later, he's like, okay, I think it's better. I think it's better. I'm checking his vitals. Yeah. They're like, should we land? I'm like, just give me a second. Like, just I, wait, uh, yeah, wait, like, wait, everyone wait. Yeah. And um, he's like, I think it's closing again, which can happen sometimes if you have another reaction. Sure. Okay. Like the first epinephrine it. doesn't work and you have to do a second injection. And I'm like, let's see if that's actually happening. So I got my iPhone flashlight, this limited tools I have. Mm -hmm. And I look in the back of his throat and he's actually having, like, you know, when you're about to go on stage and you have an adrenaline rush, your throat yeah. gets dry. Yeah. yeah. That's what was happening to him. So now it wasn't closing. It was just so dry. But it he felt, felt like tight. it was closing. Yeah. yeah. So he was actually okay. So for the rest of the journey, I just kept checking his vitals. I said, we don't have to land. His vitals are okay. He's very comfortable. We can watch him. So I watched him the whole flight to Israel. We land, paramedics take him off. Three days later, I meet him in one of the hospitals there. We hug it out. What? Like the whole thing. Oh my God. That's amazing. And it was really fun. And after that, Senator Chuck Schumer and his team reached out and said, we should lobby to get EpiPens on yes. planes. And we did that. And we had a press conference. Oh my God, that's and amazing. So there, on there's EpiPens. Not on all of them. Sure. But like 70% or something on domestic flights. I yeah. literally had this conversation with my mom the other day about how like more just like general places need to have EpiPens. Like obviously I, I don't have a super, super life threatening. Well, it's like, we're like not really sure. It's an, it's an almond thing. <sighs> and, but I just feel like more She people, picks around them. She'll eat the food with almonds on them. She'll just, she'll put them to the side. Okay. Must be not that bad of a reaction. It's it's not that bad. So uh, the last time I had oh. a reaction, I was 21 and I had a bag full of almonds and then got on a treadmill. Do you want to show your face on camera? And no, that's okay. Yeah. yeah. And we have a picture. We'll show you my entire body broke out into hives. It lasted like two Ooh. days. My face was giant. My lymph nodes here wow. were huge, but my throat didn't close up. And so I didn't. It didn't even end up going to ER, but I went and did uh, an allergy test and stuff. And he gave me one just to like keep on In hand. Case, yeah. yeah. So anyways, I don't drink almond milk and I just pick around the almonds and don't eat almonds. Okay. But I think I could. Like if there was like a sliced Lauren. granola. Well, I've, if you have an EpiPen. Yeah, it's yeah. A, maybe like, one year expired. It's probably fine. <laughs> get a new EpiPen. I mean, or better life insurance. One of the two. Uh, yeah. yeah. But no, I, I make sure he's the beneficiary. Obviously. Or the dogs. Yeah, or yeah. the dogs. Dogs yeah. first, then me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I agree. I think that they need to be more readily available because they're also like not that complicated. Like I would feel more confident as just like a bystander of EpiPenning someone than doing paddle stuff like that. That's crazy. I know that like- Well, the paddles, the new defibrillators are really good now. Are they? Yeah. First of all, you just need to learn chest compressions. Oh, Hands yeah. only CPR is really the key. And then the defibrillator is an added benefit. You put it on while you're doing the chest compressions. Okay. And then they'll say like, all right, hands off analyzing rhythm. And I'll tell you if it's a shockable oh, rhythm. Oh, wow. 
And it's wow. like, that is really good. There's only like one button. Wow. Wow. So you can't fuck it up. Yeah, you're, well. it's really hard to mess because it talks to you. It tells you like apply the battles to the, the sticky yeah. things to the chest, and they have like a basic diagram. Wow, that's great. That yeah. probably saves so many lives. Yeah. I feel like that, and also I thought it was called the Heimlich remover for almost my entire life remover. until a couple of years ago. Mm. But I feel because like you that and the Heimlich the blockage. Does that not make sense? It yeah. I thought it was the Heimlich remover, but I, I think that that and chest compressions is probably something that everyone probably needs to know how to do. In the LAX airport, there's a, a kiosk with like a, a little CPR dummy oh, with yeah. my face teaching you how to oh. do CPR. <laughs> it's actually like 16 airports across the US. And Partnered with the American Heart Association. Really? Yeah. <laughs> what terminal is in? We're gonna go look for it next time. Uh, I don't know which terminal. It's in near gate 150. Near gate 150. Okay, we're gonna there look for it be, next time. In every single terminal, there should be a Dr. Mike face going. <laughs> <laughs> Learn CPR. <Yeah. laughs> That's and gonna, get an EpiPen. That's gonna be your billion dollar idea. Wait, hold on. Do you wanna know the best part of what Delta gave me for like saving yes. this oh my God, young yeah. gentleman's life? <gasps> Everyone on the plane thanked me for not diverting, which was weird. They should thank me for saving the guy's life, not, not diverting. Right. I immediately thought, I was like, fuck, that would suck to have to go back an hour. So you're on the same page as the rest of yeah. the plane. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all the flight attendants wrote a really nice note, like a thank uh -huh. you note. They signed it. I was like, oh, that's sweet. And then Delta sends me a hundred dollar credit. <laughs> that's it? <laughs> And I didn't sit in my seat that I was first class the whole time. Right. Sad. You, and, I, I was like, like, at least give me my credit for the flight. I feel nope. like you should get like free Delta for life. No, I don't need that. Not if, to mention, you, like, if you save a whole uh, ass but, life. No, also, how much money did you save them by not diverting the flight? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you should get that. I, I don't even need the hundred, just my, my flight. Like, <laughs> the, the flight I was trying to enjoy. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, wow. instead of having to take vitals every hour. Yeah. I will more. Say that, yeah. I, I'm learning more and more just talking to you. It seems like you do enjoy... Um, teaching. I like it, yeah. Yeah, like, I don't know if it's like a mentoring idea or just like sharing information. Is that like something that you've still found a way to like get enjoyment out of? I don't know why I've always liked it because I feel everyone has a natural curiosity to learn, especially when it's about themselves. Mm -hmm. right, right. And if I can make it a little bit more interesting and less dense than reading a textbook, I think that's totally. good for everybody. Yeah, 100%. I, I know that TikTok is not an education platform, but there are <laughs> educational pieces of content no, on there are. TikTok. There are. There are some good peeps. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we were talking before we started here, you, you're actually getting into more of a, a real like teacher mindset and also like, what, creating specific courses around this? Or? Yeah, so I've created a course that's called Professionals Media Academy mm -hmm. for those who are experts who want to share their wisdom. You don't have to just be a doctor. You could be a banker, a librarian, whatever, what have you. And my course will teach you how to have success, not just on social media, not just YouTube, but also on television, how to get on the big nationwide shows, um, how to build a team to help you succeed here. Do you need an agent? Do you not need an agent? What's a brand deal look like? And there's worksheets, there's videos, there's live seminars. It's, it's really positive because so many people reach out asking these questions and I wish I could help everybody, but now I can through the course. So I'm really excited about which, it. Which chapter do you cover when to take the shirt off versus when to keep it on? <laughs> the shirt always stays on. Okay, got it, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> always. Okay, got it. Have you convinced? Not, not for my boxing matches though. <laughs> which by the way, I was offended by you earlier. <gasps> Go on. You, Sorry. You called pro, me an amateur. Pro. I know. I know. When you said that, you I was like, an amateur. <gasps> okay, professional boxer. Yeah, sorry. It's here. We, I, I know. I'm so sorry. I apologize. Professional. Because because what's your what's your score now? What's your, your professional? As a professional, I'm actually winless. Let, I'm Owen. Hey, how, how many, how many uh, fights? How many fights have you? Um, I have one win, one loss. Yeah. Okay. But my you, one professional fight I lost. You, yeah. Why'd you ask that question? What? <laughs> I yeah. forgot. You know what? We actually watched it too, and I and I. But you're even. It was so good. It was so incredible. I mean, it was lackluster. But I'm uh, coming back. You're coming back. Yeah. You, you will want see more. me in the ring again. <gasps> you want more? Yeah. They actually offered me a rematch with the same guy on this upcoming fight against. Uh, That's already new. Nate Diaz. But I want to have a redemption arc. Okay. Oh. But so, do you want to take him on now, or do you want to yeah, like? I wish I wow. could take him on now. They offered me the fight with like six weeks to go, and I would need to lose twenty pounds. It would be a lot. Oh, that's insane. How much do you weigh now? 210? 210? Yeah. yeah. So 20, maybe yeah. 205. That, Ooh, that's a lot. That pounds? would be a really intense training camp for six yeah. weeks. Yeah, you that's why I was it? short. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're gonna fight again. I also, there's something about you being a doctor and being okay with being punched in the head that I'm like, wow, you have so many extra. Hold on, who okay, said, yeah, yeah, just yeah. because <laughs> I got punched in the head, they didn't yeah. say I was okay with this it. This is what she does. This, yeah. She'll take the she'll take one perspective of it and just be like, so like, I know that you're a doctor. And, and you love getting punched in the head. And you love 
but like hurting other people, no, but right? Like boxing is a you had wildly... no problem putting the Hippocratic oath on the side so you could hit somebody real quick. <laughs> it's like when no, did we say that? I was gonna say you're so smart that you're like I could lose a few brain cells here and there getting getting hit because like when you're signed up for boxing, you're not gonna never get hit. Let's talk about brain cells real quick. Yeah, <laughs> let's talk. About Lauren just <laughs> recently experienced something that we'd love to fact check with you. Okay. <laughs> And when I wow. say we, I'd love her too. Okay, so I was I was in the shower and I dropped my razor and our um, faucet handle is uh, like, a, it's kind of like a cube, super sharp pointy corners. And so it's kind of like a big sweeping upward motion that my head just went straight into the corner of this faucet. And- Ouch. Painful, yes. But more shockingly, I experienced a taste in my mouth that I'd never tasted before. <laughs> <laughs> and so I immediately was like, oh, I have brain fluid in my brain. I'm obviously dying. I just lost brain cells. Mm. But I think I'm okay. Question mark. Not your doctor. <laughs> <laughs> there is no way I'm going to clear you from head trauma on a podcast. No, 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 no. <laughs> but you're, you're good. <laughs> you're good. If someone were to hit their head hard enough, would it be out of the question for them to taste weird things? <laughs> I've never heard of it. Oh, don't let that stop you with Lauren. She is an enigma. <laughs> but it may be possible. Okay. I was like, oh, that's an interesting, fun to taste yeah. of what I tasted before. Other coronaviruses existed before COVID and True. most people did not this drastically lose their sense of taste. So maybe you're going to be COVID-20. Okay, perfect. Your patient zero. <laughs> that's yeah, so good. Our running theory is that like her brain was just like piece not on a couple things and like mm. forgot to like taste things for a while or introduced a new one. No, I think it was a piece of brain in my mouth. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, there is this unique situation that happens right before you have a seizure that you actually smell, smell toast, burning right? rubber. Rubber. Or yeah, there's like burning toast, whatever, burning something. My yeah. ex was um, severely epileptic. And so I have been through the ringer with a uh, seizure research quotes, but the, the metallic taste was one mm. of his like most prominent symptoms when he was yeah. having an aura. It was wild. Yeah. It was so wild. So it can happen. I would love to wrap on, on this question for you. Thinking about all the things you know and the things that we don't know, what's one thing in the medical practice that you think by the time we're all not here anymore, we're gonna look back that we do currently and go, I cannot believe in 2023, we were still doing that. Colonoscopies. Oh, this is music to Jeremy's ears. Except well, no, for you'll be dead by then. No, w colonoscopies are wonderful. Oh, right. They they can catch cancers early. They mm -hmm. can prevent cancers early by taking out polyps. But the idea in the future that we needed to stick a camera in order to see it, where we have this new technology that can just go into your body, probably don't need that anymore. Yeah, that's. I think I I am in favor of that. And if you want to run for office, I've. I mean, that's not office. That's like you got to create. You got to get some engineer to create some magical see-through device. I mean, if we're using CRISPR to like like modify eye color at this point, I mean, it can't be that far off, right? No, we're far off. <laughs> <laughs> so not in your lifetime, it's unfortunately. Sad, like, I, I'm trying to think of like back in the day, what do we do weird? And, you know, we would bleed people out because right. we thought that was healthy. L or, lobotomies. Yeah, lobotomies. We would stick things into people's heads to like cure their headaches or their mental health issues. So like, I would think sticking things into butts <laughs> to <Yeah>. fix their <laughs> cancer. <laughs> Probably we can we'll maybe get rid of advanced, and find something. Yeah. Doctor, and also you have to shit your brains page. out for 24 hours beforehand. And this is all and bad. again, these are yeah. beneficial things. We should get colonoscopy starting age 45 or 10 years before your first degree relative was first diagnosed. Great oh. tidbit. That, oh yeah, it's great. Great tidbit. All um, the medical information. Just is the course <laughs> that you just talked about, is it available? Yes, professionalsmediaacademy.com. So no, no, we're doing links in bio because we have the, okay. we have the, the well, links in the, the description box because like the, <laughs> I'll forget that immediately. But um, is there anything else that, that you'd like to chat with before we head out? No, I think we, we covered all of your medical histories. But, I'm so excited. I'm so glad that we diagnosed my throat trauma. We've been trying to have a doctor on this show for a long time. Yeah. And um, we're thrilled to have you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. But now we started so high. What do you mean? I mean, now the next medical professional, it's not Dr. Mike. I know. Yeah. You might, you might have been our Maybe they'll home. take off their shirt. Ooh. We'll find a shirtless doctor. And yeah. with that, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for coming on. Thank we appreciate you. It was good to meet you. It. Yep. Okay. Go. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.